DD214 Gaming Podcast is for mature audiences only. Any, Any videos, videos, music, or, or entertainment, entertainment not originating from DD214 Gaming is used, is used and, and covered, covered under Section 107 of the Copyright Act of 1976, also known as Fair Use. use. Opinions, Opinions expressed are our own and do not, not. represent any DOD or U.S. government entities as a whole. This, this podcast, podcast is for entertainment purposes only. Viewer and listener discretion is advised. You are, you are no, no longer alone, alone now, now because, because we have, have you. you. Good morning. I'm still, I'm still promoting. I'm still promoting. Good morning, everybody. How's everybody feeling? How's everybody doing? Oh, shit. It's been a week. Oh, damn, dude. Good to see you guys. How you guys been? My brain is tired. Really scrambled? Tired? My, my brain is tired. Yeah. It's, it's not been a long week. It's just been a lot of exercise in the brain. Absolutely. I, you, I'm I'm really looking forward to like some of your reviews that you have coming up. I, uh, yeah. I got a little sneak preview uh, before 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 the before we, we went live here, and uh, I'm really excited to hear some yeah. of your reviews this week. So yeah. Yeah. Sure. So I I mean, did you guys watch Mandalorian last week? We did actually. We did. I, we are we are caught up. So oh, and I, I didn't fucking fall asleep this time. How about that? He's semi caught up since he fell asleep two episodes ago, but he didn't fall asleep this last episode. So yeah. it's not a hundred percent caught up. He's just partially. There. No, I did. I did exactly what I said I was going to do. I, I didn't even. I, I like literally. I watched the uh, the little like the recap. Know, yeah, the recap and like which showed done, nothing. Which showed nothing of the doctor. That's what I'm suit, bro. Bro, yeah, the recap like, had nothing to do with the episode before. To be honest, telling you, I didn't tell you, I didn't miss a fucking thing. Nick, Nikki's like Nikki was like poking fun of me. She was like poking fun of me the whole time. You know what I mean? It was like, it's like, I, I won't fall asleep because it's not fucking stupid. Right. If it's not stupid, I won't fall asleep. <laughs> right. Like, no, you're right. You're right. Episode, you're right. That epi- I'm sorry. Episode three fucking sucks. And episode four was much, much gooder, much gooder. What did you guys think? I liked it. It was good. I really think we're starting to get, you know, I, I think Bo is struggling a lot right now with her identity. Yeah, I have, I have questions for you guys since you're like bigger Star Wars nerds than I am. Like, I got question, I got questions that I want to ask you guys. So, like, freaking, but I mean, but you guys start with like how you're feeling, and then I have questions. So, for you guys. honestly, I'm feeling like Bo Katan is kind of stepping in and accepting the the Children of the Watches methodology. Some like she's stepped up and she's. Helping she's, them out. She's, she's observing. Observing. She's learning. Um, and then just the development with Grogu, even with uh, Grogu and him and his development, even this last episode. And when he went and fucking whooped that foundling's 
ass Yo. with them fucking training darts. Like, he took two pot shots, and then he just backflip and triple shot at that motherfucker quick. Yeah, it was it was it was an easy engagement for Grogu once he felt it, once he was ready for it. I, I actually a couple a couple of my questions for you guys revolve around Grogu, and so like what my first question is, what did you guys think about watching him escape uh, the order the order sixty six execution, um, and like like what were your guys' thoughts on the on that flashback? Do you know so, first off? Do you know who the actor is who played? Yes. Yeah. I was yep. I was about to go there. I was about to go there. So first off, big props to Favaru and Dave Filoni for giving Ahmed Best a second chance for making it go full circle because the guy that played the Jedi that ended up saving Grogu during Order 66 is the mm-hmm. same actor who played Jar Jar Binks in the prequel trilogy. Yeah. Oh, okay. So they gave him a uh, very strong redemption. Of, it was great. Because of the his role as Jar Jar Binks, he actually hit an all-time low and was like contemplating ending his life. Yeah. Because of the extreme criticism he got for playing that character. And now they gave him a chance where he's actually come back and as a badass Jedi as a, Jedi too. As a Jedi and not just any Jedi the Jedi that saved fucking Grogu, yeah, and may, who who may also still be alive. It's entirely possibly still alive. We, we didn't see. It, yeah, we didn't see. It's we didn't possible. See, like, yeah, it's you know, I mean, the, the the Jedi were hunted to the ends to the ends of the galaxy, basically. But it is it is well known within Star Wars lore. Like a lot of them survived. A lot of them. Survived. A lot. Yeah, like there's the and like plenty probably that we have, we we don't even heard of or know the names of. It's like, but a lot are out there you know, in, in some manner or form. Um, what did you guys, okay. So now let me flip the script on this. So we have, we, so we have verified that Grogu was in fact present. He was in fact in early training and development to be a, a youngling. You know what I mean? A, uh, a, a Jedi. A Jedi. Know. Yep. Now, he, now he is under the, 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 the guys, the, the guide and the control of, of the, the tribe of Mandalorians. So like, what is your thoughts on him switching from fucking Jedi to a Mandalorian creed and, and lifestyle? So, so here's, <laughs> here's my thing. Um, if, if they do this right, Grogu will become the second ever Mandalorian Jedi. Oh, shit. <laughs> That's because a big that's deal who, too. That's who made the like. That's who made the fucking dark saber, right? Is the that original Mandalorian Jedi, the only right. Mandalorian to date to have been a Jedi, is uh-huh. the one who created the dark saber. We talked about it last week. Yes, where yeah. you know that's why the Mandalorians believe the dark saber belongs to them right. because it was forged in the forges of Mandalore and all that jazz. I remember that conversation because I yep. said I still I hold the the saying too, like. The Jedi didn't deserve to hold it because they were clearly like they had bigger bigger problems mm-hmm. going on. Yeah, so there was there so, was no reason the Jedi the Jedi should be the caretakers of fucking anything at that point. You know what I mean? Like Mandalorians were well they, within their right to take that shit back. Like exactly. well within their right. So I see I see them going down the path of Grogu trains with the Mandalorians, becomes a Mandalorian, and then at some point goes back and completes his Jedi training to be a Jedi Mando. W- the the second ever Mandalorian Jedi. I mean, technically, if, even if he doesn't he, complete his training. And and he's and he's a member of the same species as fucking Yoda. So we're talking like this would be a powerful motherfucker, right? Like yeah. given given, you know, given the opportunity like to like succeed, right? Like there's there's images out there of uh grogu in like full mandalorian <laughs> armor is it really? yeah there yeah. It, there's some really good um depictions out there uh but for those who don't know the species that that they are they're called the the lanik the lanik i i don't know if i'm saying the La- you would know more than me on this one <laughs> uh yeah it the La- yeah lanik l-a-n-n-i-k i don't know if it's lanik you know, with the way that they pr- pronounce words in there, but you know, they they are 
an interesting species. And then, yeah, very interesting species. Uh, yeah, you know, they're, they 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 they're naturally born with midichlorians, which are the right, you the know, little, the atom the atoms that make the force. I call it a pl- I call it a plot hole in the fucking. <laughs> In episode one, but whatever. Like, anywho, I'm just fucking with you, Joe. No, yeah, no, but yeah, I mean, great episode. I think we're sorry. Wait, but yeah, I, much, I'm, much better, I'm, much better episode. Just I just, w- I want to see where Bo Katan goes from here. I'm not. Oh, and and I also have yeah. this one thing that I want to talk about too. That I kind of feel like, you know, the title. What the title. I don't think the title is about Din Djarin or Bo Katan or anybody. I think the Mandalorian is Grogu. I think that that's what this title is centering around and that at the end of this story, like we're saying here, we're going to see Grogu with Mandalorian armor. And I think he is what the title is referring to. We're going to eventually see a older version of Grogu about, you know, Yoda size yep. versus baby Yoda. We're going to see an adult, which I mean, technically, technically, if you look at Star Wars lore, Grogu at this point in the Star Wars timeline is about 54, 55 yep. years old. He's a baby. He's liter- he's literally a baby in that species. Right. Right. So so Yoda we're gonna was, eventually see Yoda he was, was like, like eight, eight or nine hundred when he died. Yeah. So yeah. This kid's not even kids not even gonna be full and, grown until he's like fucking. When you look he at was the exactly nine hundred years old. When you look at the timeline from when Order 66 happened to Episode 1, Season 1 of Mandalorian, it was 50 years. Okay. See, that I did not, that I did not know. Yeah. I did yeah. not know that timeline. So that, it's that, like, that's like, but you know, and it's it, it breaks my no, heart from, because... Not from Order 66 to then. It was, well, yeah, Order 66 to then it was 50 years because... From Order sixty six to the fall of Vader. This is a, this is after the only, this is, yeah. It was like 23, 24 years. Yeah. Okay. So, so we're looking at he's you know, and then from the end of season one of Mando to season two, there's a two year span. Okay. So yeah, like. I, I just yeah. I always find it fascinating because you know there's people I, I I enjoy some of these things and there's people like you find gentlemen that are like way more knowledgeable. You love about this shit, yeah. And you can nerd out on it all day, so I can just sit here and fucking listen. So, but yeah, so, uh, yeah, let's uh, let's uh, yeah. So, so yeah. what happened? What happened to your beard, Joe? So, <laughs> this is this is kind of my week in review. Um, <laughs> I was I was fuck happened, trimming Joe? the beard. Trying to get, you know, some of those scragglies, those weird fucking ones that don't want to ever go in the right direction. Get those down. Thought I had the bathroom door fully latched. The doors in this apartment, some of them don't latch properly. So I didn't have it latched. The cats were fucking around, roughhousing outside the fucking bathroom door in the ma- in the master bedroom. And they banged into it, came through the fucking door. I got my leg clawed in the process. My hand slipped and I went right down the fucking side. Oh, so man. It was it was one of those situations where it was like, okay, well, I'm not going completely no facial hair. I'll keep the stash. Everything else had to go because there was no real fixing it at that point. Honestly, I, I think this, the stash isn't, isn't, isn't that bad. Like I've seen much worse mustaches. You know what I mean? You look like, like you look like the good sheriff. Yeah, yeah, the good the good uh, sheriff. I, I mean, you wear, a white I, hat. you wear a white hat. People have fucking called me a couple other things. I've been called Farva with just the mustache. Farva, dude, dude, that was like dude, dude, one liter of cola. Like, was that like the first thing you said after you sent the yeah. picture? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Yeah. So I mean. I had one buddy fucking say that it wasn't an accident. It was an application to, to catch a predator. Um, <laughs> and then he com- com- commences to saying he's seen he's seen better facial hair on the neo Nazis in Knoxville, Tennessee. Oh my um, fucking god! <laughs> oh my god! He was, he was, fucking, he was trolling fucking hardcore. 
That's fucking. That's funny, dude. That oh, funny. Ouch. at least at least at, at, at least you can you know you can do the the whole like self-effacing humor thing about it and just kind of you know enjoy it. You have a mustache for what like three days before you before you have a full beard back. I'm assuming. Uh, you know what I mean, yeah, not for a couple not, weeks. It'll it'll be back. I mean, it's not. It, it doesn't take long. I just gotta give it yeah. time. Get right. past that initial initial itch once it starts coming back in again. <laughs> Well, at least the two o'clock shadow doesn't look bad, but you know, like what I like to, I like doing like the thick mustache and then like the, the, I'm a drunk detective that lost everything. Look, you know, like, you know, that, that's the, that's the look I like, you know, that's the look I, I try to go for, but it never works out, man. But I'm sorry that happened to you. I can't wait to see the drunk development detective next week. that's lost everything. Really the drunk John? detective that has lost everything. Yeah. Like, you know, he's got the thick... We're, we're, we're talking Jim Gordon getting ready to fucking just... Jim Gordon Jim when he's Gordon had enough. Off of, if you've watched Harley, the animated Harley Quinn show on Netflix, on HBO Max... What up, Ashton? It's like, it's like the Jim Gordon from that, where he's like... Not like 5 o'clock shadow, but still has the mustache. Yeah. And Jim, it's like he fucking hates life. And is, wears the same clothes six days a week. Hasn't showered yeah. in thirteen. <laughs> hasn't even hasn't, exactly. uh, hasn't hasn't seen hasn't seen a freaking hasn't seen his toothbrush in like freaking three weeks and like didn't notice it was gone. You know. Yep. Now yep. <laughs> there is one other thing from this week that I forgot when we were prepping for the episode. I have been getting caught up on the latest season of Picard. Okay, Ooh. how's that going? Um, I I'm actually enjoying it. Compared to the first two seasons, the first two seasons were a clusterfuck across the board. This season, it's returning back to its roots. Okay. And it's almost like they're setting up for the next next generation crew, in a sense. Um, Like, they brought Riker back. They brought LaForge back. Worf's back. Oh no shit. Um, and then at the same time, LaForge's da- daughter is now the navigation expert for the latest generation of ships, like that the nav person. And so they're they and Picard just found out he has a son with the doctor from the next generation. So it's like they're setting up for the second generation of the next generation, the next, next generation in a sense. Um, And it's, it's really returning back to Star Trek roots versus being a, we're just going to capitalize on fucking Patrick Stewart's face and give him a show again. Are you enjoying it? Oh yeah. Yeah. I mean, I just, I watch it in the mornings when I'm, sitting there getting into work checking emails and shit i'll pull it up on my ipad okay. watch an episode or two and then shut it back off and i actually enjoy going in and fucking pulling it up every morning it's not a there's no thought process there because of how good the development of so far over the episodes i have watched so far has been the way the story's progressed Sure. It has me wanting to come back for more every morning. And That's awesome. I put it Good. into my routine. Once I'm done with this season, then I'm going to have to find something else to throw in there. But um, it's definitely, it's it's caught me, it's brought me back in. Where Good. at the end of last season of Picard, I was like, I'm probably not going to fucking watch the next one. Hmm. Interesting. Interesting. I'm, not, I'm looking, I'm looking forward to meet. As I like, as I remember it, uh, I believe me and Nikki started watching it, and we didn't exactly stop watching it. We just kind of like fell, fell off. off. We, we just fell off, and we haven't really hopped back on yet. So I'm like, I'm a little intrigued now, maybe to like start her back up, may, maybe again, and like get, see. My maybe, thing is, see. Yeah, for me, stuff like that, I have to watch by myself because the misses isn't. We have a few shows into- like that isn't big into like sci-fi and stuff like that or even another show i watch is a uh, new amsterdam on netflix which is like a medical drama slash fucking 
it's it's just an all the over the place type of show, but it keeps you coming wanting to come back for more. And because she's worked in the medical field for so long, she doesn't like watching shit like that. And I don't like watching medical shows with her to begin with, because she will sit there and pick apart the whole fucking TV show. Like if they're having to do CPR on somebody, she's like, they're not doing the chest compressions right. Like, yeah, it's yeah. fucking TV. <laughs> This is how it happens. No, but very good, man. I'm glad you enjoyed it. And before I get into my reviews, there is a guy named Joseph Cardenas flirting with Jay in the comments there. He's saying that Jay looks handsome as ever, looking like uh, Brad, oh, Brad Pitt, Pitt from, from Fury. Fury. Cardenas. That's, yeah, that's one of my fucking engineer bros right there, dude. <laughs> What's up, homie? Good to see you in here this morning. Oh, oh, you, heard, you heard that, Squilini? It's an engineer. Yeah, he's Fuck fucking engineer. Yeah. <laughs> fuck you mp fuck you uh, motherfucker. so i actually <laughs> forgot to add one tv show to my list of reviews and i'll what say it. so i'll say it real quick i started watching a show called let me i have to extrapolations 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 thank you mm -hmm. it's a anthology series by scott z burns from apple tv it just came out on uh, march 17th and it is about climate change in the future um it stars it has a star climate change is a myth everyone the show the the show <laughs> you fucking stop so so first the show has a has a has a cast and a half in each episode shows different perspectives of these people during a current or coming apocalyptic the end of the world is coming okay. uh, we have david diggs kit harrington sienna miller matthew rice peter reiger um sienna miller meryl streep who else we got here edward norton david schwimmer diane Fucking lane Schwimmer. michael gandolfini who just broke my heart in the last episode that that we just watched uh but we're but the, each episode has a different theme um the second episode which takes place in the year 2046 called whale fall it, it the 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 main character is talking is communicating with a whale and the technology that they're using is that they're using sonar to easily translate what the whales are saying to easily translate what the whales are saying mm -hmm. to to the to the scientists yeah they're and pretty, I think they're pretty close to doing that with dolphins right yeah now. yeah it, the, the science is pretty uh -huh. accurate apple apple tv is pretty is pretty what do you think what do you what do you think what do you think Diabetes. the dolphins are going to say when, when, when we finally translate it for the first time fucking motherfuckers stop <laughs> like can you guys stop you know and that's and that's <laughs> actually interesting that you say that because like the conversation that happens the, 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 I'm not going to go on what the situation is, but one of the situations yeah. is that going on that this is the last whale on Earth. Oh, and, surprise. Yeah, and this Fucking whale surprise. is being tricked by global conglomerate pieces of shit using sonar to trick the whale thinking that... Yeah, it, because thinking, global warming's a myth. Oh, my fuck. <laughs> I hate this show. <laughs> this is this is why this is why everyone hates us. Okay, like, there's always one. There's always one in the room. Like, so what's heartbreaking is that the things that the whale is saying, like like it it under it doesn't understand the technology that the humans are using. It doesn't understand why it's the only one left on Earth. It doesn't understand why it's a big it dumb is. Animal. Except yeah, it's like smart, but the only but the like, only no, thing that it does understand is wanting to die, and that oh, cool. is and that's where you know you start hearing about the the animals being beached and things like that. And you know, where anyway, you know, you go and then the next episode talks about the flood, about Miami, about Florida going underwater, which people have been talking about for years. I can't wait, Max. Got, got Max. My, got my fucking fingers crossed on that one, dude. Like, can't wait for that one. Yeah. Oh, come okay, in. It's just... oh Jesus! <laughs> Got laid last night, by the way, Max. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> and you know, so now you know, so now we're so there's a, there's a lot of interesting aspects about the show. But one of the interesting things about the show is that since the show takes place from 2037 all the way to 2070, okay, the thing that interests me the most is that these are kids who are grown who were born from 2000 and on who oh, yeah. are. 
you know, who are constantly fighting climate and things like that. And in no way, I'm not watching this because I'm a Greenpeace slut or anything like that. You know, Apple TV, bullshit. Apple TV, TV, bro. Bro, I fucking throw my cigarette butts everywhere. All right, oh I I don't God. like you don't know fucking admit shit like that. Bro. I'm in the car. It's even worse than being a hippie. <laughs> listen, God, he's a hippie listen. who also doesn't give a shit about climate change. Listen, yeah, like, we're, it's a myth. We're I. It's not that I don't. I, <laughs> I hate I hate both of you. What I I'm what I what I care like, about it what I what I care about when it comes to climate is where the fuck I'm gonna be living and what do I have to wear when that time happens because I I need to you, adapt because we need like, to adapt. Don't you it's live not, like on the East Coast, bro? You're fucked. Yeah, you are it's, fucked. Exactly because it's not fucked. about it's not about survival. It's about adapting because we're not gonna survive. We're, we have to adapt, Pretty and much. that's and that's a big theme that this show has too is adapting. Well, to well, the situation not, not just our children either we have to like adapt our grandchildren to this it's happening yeah, it is, it's yeah. so it's happening like, i so i so far the show itself because they're, the last episode i watched dealt with a major terrorism plot with with killing half the world to save the planet itself to save, to save everything yeah so it was a very and so it was they a, tried to thanos things that's what, what they did wait they a minute decided what? to isn't that like the trolley, the trolley car problem? The in like the, it's like that philosophical question. Like it's yep. the trolley, it's the you know it's the dilemma. Like would you would you kill one to save thousands? Yeah. Would, so would you, the, would you would you kill would you kill millions to save the world? Yeah. So the you themes I mean? like, the the themes are heavy, and the show and the cast like everything is so convincing and so powerful. It is a great show, and I'm actually yeah. highly entertained by it. Um, I'm going to give it a six out of ten. Okay. Okay. I'm good. You know, I, I do feel it could be better. The length is great. Production is fantastic. But there's a lot of plot holes. You know, it's not a character driven show. You know, you, you don't. You, it's not a show where you have to connect with the characters. The, the, ca- the characters are there to fill the gaps in what's going on around the world. Right. And the right. most powerful line that was that I that I heard in the show was. It's too hot to hate anybody these days. And the context of the situation was a woman who's having breathing problems needs to move all the way up north so that she can breathe again. And right. she can't do it living in Florida. And she doesn't want to live with her with her, her sister, who she hates, but she can't hate her anymore because everyone's dying. So great yeah. show. Yeah, Go it's check what, it out. It's what, it's what happens, what happens when uh, we let uh, rich fucking asshole fucking demons you know in human skin yeah run, run, and, run, and, run that, and that's a, and that's another big theme the biggest theme is kit harrington who for you don't even see in the show you know for, you see him once or twice he is the big bad con- global conglomerate piece of shit who's mining in that in 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 the north pole who's, still like yeah, yeah still, even yeah. While, while the while the world is collapsing around 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 everything like there, he's, there's, he's, there's still gonna be those asshole fucking demons in human skin, dude. Like just fucking mm-hmm. fucking continuously fucking yeah. everyone else over. Yeah, great show. So I, just, I remind reminder, GD two fourteen gaming like officially stands by. There is no such thing as a as a good person billionaire. We stand by that. That's like, it's there's very no true. such thing as a good as a good human being who is also a billionaire. You don't get They're that far. Good. You don't get that far with, with without blood in your hands. You don't get any. You don't get any. You don't. You don't get anywhere near that, that amount of money. By being a good person on on like any yeah. level, pretty much. So like, what? Mm-hmm. So what do you what what do you tell people to do, Jay? Every now and then, to, uh, which to read, which, right? Always, 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 always. So even, even if I don't always take my own advice, but yes, yeah. So this read. so this week I read several, several short stories this week. And and it was I, I was doing production on my other show, the Artificial Mind Sheet Plug. Go check it out. And the episode in question, the episode, the, the theme of the episode was the famous short stories. Mm-hmm. And I chose, I'm going to, and I'll start off with, actually, I, st- I started off with two stories called Birds. Okay. okay. Well, first, you know what the one is but by by uh, Daphne de Maurier, which came out in 1952, which turned into the Hitchcock, uh, the Alfred Hitchcock movie. No, no explanation there. No explanation okay. there. The you know the story the story is actually kind of in, the short story kind of brings up the fact that like in the movie because the movie I believe takes place in a different section than what the short story does. The story explains that this is a worldwide event, and it 
shows that in the movie. But there was another story that I read called Birds. Okay. Uh, by Norwegian author Tarje Vesas. And the story follows the inner world of Mattis, a 37-year-old man with a childlike mind who lives with his sister in a remote mo- rural area. But And, like, Mattis is fascinated by, like, the birds that surround him. And his fat, but his fascinating takes his fascination takes on an increasingly obsessive quality as the story progresses. But when a tragedy befalls the birds, Matt is, Mattis is forced to confront the reality of the natural world and where he belongs in it. And the story is poignant exploration of innocence, vulnerability, and the delicate balance of life. How did you like I, it? I kind of felt like I could relate to it. Okay. Okay. You know, and that that was that was. And I didn't do that one for the show, but that was one that was very interesting. But what I did read was was several stories that dealt with a character named Multivac, which was created by Isaac Asimov. 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 I going to I'm going to Soviet with the names. No, you're okay, dude. I'm going okay. to Soviet with the name. But anyway, you know, I, I I was checking out Robot Dreams. I checked out a few of the stories, and there are actually a couple of stories with the character Multivac in it. Mm-hmm. Uh, I'm not going to get into who Multivac is, but what the story that has literally like, I was like, holy shit, was the last question. Are you familiar with the story? Maybe if you maybe if you just if you describe the it's a, it's a short story. I'm assuming it is a short story. I've I've read many many of his short stories, but not all of them. But what was yeah. the, uh, the so the, the last thing around? So the last the last question published in 1956, it was set in the distant future, spanning billions of years, and explores themes of entropy. Is that the one where there's a fucking like a, a robot like house basically, and it's freaking? It's and they're like, asking him a bunch of questions, and he comes to the end of the to the end of the universe, and he's like, "I I know what the answer is." No, that's no 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 no. That's freaking Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, right? No. I, no. I I I'm not familiar too much with Hitchhikers. There was like there was like a a science fiction story I remember reading where it was like uh, it was like basically like post post nuclear war. Yeah. And so like and the house was still doing its like uh, attempting to do its daily tasks and it yep. was like. And like shit was falling apart, and like so, is that the uh, one you're thinking of? No, but okay. the, the the one this one was more about. Like it, it started off with humans asking him throughout these billions of years, uh, how can the net amount of entropy of the universe be massively decreased? How do you decrease predictability? Right. You, I mean, right. It, it's kind of an impossible question to answer. Uh, but despite centuries of technical advances, no answer was ever found. But as time passes and the universe approaches its, its inevitable death, humanity constructs a giant supercomputer named Multivac to finally answer the question. And when Multivac is asked the question repeatedly over thousands of years, it is still unable to find the unsatisfactory answer. But however, as the universe nears its end, Multivac finally arrives at the solution. It tells groups of humans that it has discovered a way to reverse the entropy of the universe, eff- effectively resetting it and starting the cycle anew. The never-ending cycle of the universe. Good that evening, Ben. Right. That sounds about right. Yeah, I was, yeah. I was gonna say that sounds about right. Like Yeah, so in the in the climax of the story, Multivac asks the last question, which is interesting because think about it. The title of the story is the, the last, last question. question. Yeah. Uh, the final question is not about the nature of the universe or the fate of humanity, but simply, is this the last question? Uh, but it ends with the implication that Multivac has trans- transcended from physical form into becoming one with the universe, echoing the cycle of creation and destruction that's been going on since like the beginning of time, since caveman uh, days. Been going on for like 13 billion fucking yeah. years already, dude. Like, uh, yeah. this. You know, at, through through the stories that I did read, like I also did, I also read Gift of the Magi, which is another powerful story. If you guys are not familiar with it, please mm-hmm. read it. You know, um, it's another story. But the last question is, it, it I'm, I'm even talking about it now. I'm still a little like, holy shit, right? Pretty cool though. That's pretty cool. You know, fucking, a book, a book, a book did that for you, huh? Yeah, like, yeah. That's pretty fucking cool, huh? Yeah, and right. and then the last short story I read, which goes into my movie review, was Three Ten to Yuma, which oh no shit yeah. So I you know Three Ten to Yuma was actually yeah. was my choice, and I made a really cool uh, art depiction of of the two characters. It, it was 
you know, first, if you if you if you under if you know the characters, you know Ben Wade, Charlie Prince, and all this stuff, it's a good western. But I went in and I watched. I, I I'm really loving Cowboys, and I was just telling the guys earlier today. There's a place near me called Wild West City that I really want to be at. Uh, but anyways, you know, so we was watching um, Three Ten to Yuma, and the story is about. A veteran played by Christian Bale. I, I watched the Christian Bale and Russell Crowe one. Uh, yeah, yeah. It's, a, it's about a veteran Christian Bale who who loses his his herd th- from Russell Crowe's character Ben Wade, and he's pretty pissed off about it. And it turns into this cycle of like, well, you know, I'm gonna somehow get get back at you. And um, let me get a spoiler warning for this because this movie has been out since 2007. Uh, we know what's going on. Cowboy times. Wells Fargo's around. The Pinkertons are alive, in which I actually did not know that the Pinkertons have been around since 1850. They oh, are yeah, an bro. actual oh, yeah, bro. company, and they are fucking just as ruthless as they today as they were then. You, buddy. My friend Ben. You know, the Pinkertons are real. And I didn't even know that Wells Fargo was even around during that time, too, which is crazy oh, yeah. as hell. So there was, some wild, there was some wild ass shit out west, dude. Like, there was some wild shit going on back then. <laughs> and so, you know, so we have Ben Wade, you know, stealing wagons and things like that. And, you know, we're going to go on. We're, I'm just going to kind of skip it through. You're you fine. Know. You're fine. Yeah, so, you know, uh, Christian Bale's character, Dan, is pissed off. And then he finds out that there's a bounty out for this guy. And, you know, he says, I'll, I'll take him to the 310 to Yuma. And it, you know, it, for, it, for two hundred dollars. Yeah. You know, limping one leg, a one leg veteran. You know, he's still got it in him and you're still doing, you know, he's he's you know, he he's arguing with his wife. He's having he's about to lose his farm. The railroad is being built over his land. And like they're telling him, like, mm-hmm. you know, you got to pay this or, you know, we're done. So he needs the money. He's desperate for this money. So he goes into the challenge to bring Brett Ben Wade to the 310 to Yuma. Right. And let me let me tell you the the things that happened in between, like Ben Wade killing the one the one uh, bounty hunter because he was singing. And, you know, and then we go on into the morning where we get into the town of contention and, you know, things starting to get heated up. They're waiting for the train and Charlie Prince comes in and he offers the town two hundred dollars to whomever could shoot the guy who has Ben Wade. And that's what, she, you know, the climax of the film is this giant shootout and then this whole big toss-up of, you know, the Pinkerton backing out, Christian Bale telling his son to go with the Pinkerton, a defiant son, and then the moment happens when the shootout happens, he's trying to escape, and Ben tells him, you could go, I'll let you walk away. And Christian Bale, Dan says to Ben, I've never been a hero. I got shot in the leg by my own man while we were in retreat. And that right there just changes the whole course of like, it just like, if you're familiar with it, you know what I'm talking about, Jay. What did they like, call uh, What did they call Ben Wade's fucking pistols again? Oh, shit. Was it like the hand of God? Or like the wrath of God? I- I think God, it was God, that God's hand or some shit. God's wrath. Fucking, you got to put up a picture of those fucking beautiful fucking pistols from that movie. It was dude. said. It was said to be cursed. As anyone who touches it, the way. Th- yeah, what the hell? What the name? Yeah, I have. I have the picture of his gun too. Hang on. Yeah, it was I'll, a yeah, very beautiful pistol, dude. Fuck yeah, like. And that was something that happened within the story too. How when um. Charlie Prince saw someone with the pistols and he killed he killed them. There it is. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. Just look at that. Just look at it. Very beautiful. Uh, so yeah, so now we're going so now you know we're at the end of the movie. We know that Christian Bale's trying to, you know, do his thing. He's trying to, you know, get his money out and the major shootout and then we get to the end and Charlie Pr- you know, he's bringing this fucking guy, he's bringing Ben Wade into the train, and you're gonna have to watch the movie to see to see what fucking happens in the end. There, guys, I just told the whole movie except the end. So go watch it. Three Tenths of Yuma is for me. They called it, they called it the Hand of God. The they Hand of it, God. Okay. Yeah, they call that pistol the Hand of God. <laughs> 
fucking love that shit. I'm dude. going to give t- 310 to Yuma a 9.5 out of 10. Fuck yeah, bro. Okay. Fuck yeah, bro. Fuck yeah. Great story, great characters, great cast. I still like Max Morales says I still like the pistol from John Wick 4. It's oh, the nice. Pit, the pit vi- TGI, uh, the TTI pit viper. Yep. Okay. They're, they're nice. I'm not mad at it. I'm not mad at it. Well, but yeah, you two, know, two two different time eras. You got like I had, Wild, Wild I had, West versus I like had a super. I had I had a super long um, review. But now it's your turn, Jay. Are you sure? Are you yeah. sure? Yeah. Yeah. I okay. think that. That's all I no, had. That was okay. I, I, I enjoy, dude, I enjoy listening to you guys talk about talk about the things that that you know. I'm definitely like, going to be reading more Isaac uh, throughout the week, though. We've been in in our in believe it or not in our household, we've been talking about like setting aside more time for reading, and like I that is like that is something that I have struggled with mightily. Like like n- while while I was still in the army, and since I've gotten out, I've struggled mightily. Like getting back into it and like making yeah. it more of like the 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 relaxing hobby it used to be it's like i struggle reading now sometimes it's like it it hurts my soul it hurts my soul but i'm so happy to hear when other people do it so yeah fuck yeah dude <laughs> fuck yeah so <clears throat> all right yeah so yeah t- kind of a kind of a another regular week in in my book uh but we did we did do a couple of things and we and we got to we got to you know uh see a couple of shows that we've been we've been kind of waiting on um <laughs> I'm going to do, I'll do a quick review. So for those of you that are uh, familiar with this, this TV show, Yellow Jackets. Okay. I, uh, I watched the, the, the first season with, uh, with my beautiful girlfriend, Nikki. And then we were basically like waiting in the interim for this second season to come out. Now, before I continue, <laughs> it's just not exactly like all the way my flavor, or my cup of tea. Okay. But like, I just want to say this about this, this show these fucking people in the show are fucking crazy dude like this show this show goes so fucking like batshit insane like i'm talking like every major character yeah is is batshit completely batshit crazy and so it's like now that we're <laughs> so fucking episode two just <clears throat> fucking dropped and like like the there's only one episode out right now so we watched that the other day and let me let me let me kindly assure everyone with no spoilers everyone is still batshit fucking crazy okay like everyone in this fucking goddamn tv show like they just like i don't know i like i like it's one of those shows where like i like watching it with nikki and like I'll it's a show that's on my list i kind of chime in once in a while just to like talk shit or like make fun of one of the characters or like that's like wow lady like you really fucking lost it didn't you like you really just fucking lost your marbles didn't you like there's like there, there ain't much going on like there ain't much going on upstairs except a lot of fucking broken gears and fucking broken glass. You know what I mean? Like, he yeah. was, like everyone, literally everyone in the fucking show is fucking batshit. And so it like, that's, that's part of why, you know, I kind of jokingly made uh, this up, ep- you know, t- today's episode, we named it, you know, fucking witches be crazy. I know you showed it earlier, John, but yeah, that's why we called it witches be crazy. Cause yeah, there, there are elements of fucking witchcraft, murder, fucking cannibalism, survival, Blah 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 fucking plot pro plot holes and fucking I, I who the fuck I don't know dude I don't, even, <laughs> I don't even pretend to keep up with shows like this dude this is why, this is why I don't watch a lot of TV sometimes is because it gets really like even this is one of the more like original shows I've seen in a while it's still it's mm-hmm. still not fucking that great dude like, it's still like they, they they had to make everybody batshit crazy for it to be like watchable does that make sense so like. Yeah, you know, I'm gonna give I'm gonna give Yellow Jackets as as a whole up to this point, a, like it's a semi solid. Like we're not we're not we're not exactly flaccid, but we're not exactly like at full mass here. You know, like I'm gonna give it like about a six six and a half. Like it's kind of like it's like eh. It looks you know? about that. If you get you know if you're on like if if you're on like I don't know like maybe like a halfway decent beer buzz, you know, or maybe uh, maybe you just smoked a, smoked a pre roll from the local dispensary, you know it might be okay for like an hour here, an hour there. And then you slowly just kind of watch it over time. Maybe I, I as a whole, I'm not I'm really not fucking impressed dude. but it's, it, it is kind of fun. It is kind of fun to watch like how fucking stupid everybody in that goddamn show is. Yeah. Like, that, that makes it fun. because That's they're funny all, so. When everybody's bad shit, nobody is bad shit. Right. No tactical awareness, mm-hmm. I guess. It, it, it's, it's, 
It's fucking stupid. It, it's just. It's all fucking stupid, John. Like, I'm sorry. Like, did you, John? Can you pull? Give me a sec. Like, before I before I go on, I sent John. I sent John and Joe a picture in our in our little group chat on Facebook. Pull up the fucking picture of the matinee, the matinee fucking thing for like the the local movies. You know what I mean? Pull that up, please. Like, you guys, you guys all think I'm I'm like this jaded, cynical asshole that like doesn't like anything, and that is, it is so far. It's so far from true. But the reason you always hear me bitching and griping and moaning about dumbass shit on TV and movies, uh, in literature, whatever, is because like this is the fucking world that that we're living in right now, and like there's nothing new under the sun. It is it is all it is all fucking like the same fucking you know return bullshit. <laughs> Did Nikki just call me boring? <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Pull up that. She hundred percent did. Pull up that picture, please. I want everybody to see what like you know like how many fucking like look at this shit if you can zoom on if you can zoom in on that i cannot you know, my beautiful girlfriend's my my beautiful girlfriend says i'm boring but this is the world that says shazam 2 scream 6 ant-man fucking 3 jesus revolution and avatar 2 ladies and gentlemen this is the fucking world you live in and like this is the fucking spoon fed like spoon and force fed fucking bullshit that's getting rechurned and regurgitated up your ass Fucking well, year Shazam- year out. well, hold on, wait, wait, wait. Shazam Two was terrible. Scream Six was actually really fucking I, good. I don't see any. Yeah, but w- like, which one of those is an original story? Jesus Revolution, because they totally left out the part where like they've been, Lonnie- tell- they've been telling the story about Jesus since the beginning of the time. There is no originality in that. We we, we discussed that on this show. Like, I, I I grew up in that church. Like, I went to that church. They let they totally leave out the part where Lonnie Frisbee was like, like a gay man who was a pastor. And he died of AIDS in like the early '90s, and that church fucking like completely like fucking like blocked him off. Scream like, and Avatar did. would have to be the yeah. two the two marquee movies there, because those Ant- are Ant Man is, Ant-Man is a marquee movie now. Like Ant fucking Ant Man, that's what we're working with now, and it's the like third it. one too, right? That's I, there's I like three it. there's fucking three of them. I haven't seen the first two. Like, I like Ant Man. They were actually it's... really good. I like them. I mean, here's the, the thing: they're, Paul Rudd was the sexiest to... man. They're catering to what people want right now. Superhero movies and then I guess regurgitated prequels regurgitated and sequels, sequels right? and quadruples of fucking yeah. horror movies that should no longer be yeah. are a thing that's still around. People still go and want to see that shit. Um, and I, I that's what that's what Hollywood does. Yeah. They cater to the numbers. People more people want to see shit like that than in people want to see original content. I like art. So like, you know, I, I, I don't, I don't see a single one of those movies qualifying as what like fucking cinema art. Like that was just rehashed, regurgitated. If you like those movies, you're into them, like more power to you. It's your, it's your money. But that, that's why if I sound like a jaded and cynical asshole, well, it's because I fucking am. And I'm surrounded by bullshit like that. Like, at the fucking local movie house when I have to like, I want I want to go see a movie. And I can't even go see a movie because it's all the same fucking re- well, return fucking bullshit. You know what and, I mean? Like, and that's the thing. I'm not sure if you know, but they're actually in the process of filming the fourth Expendables movie. Is it, <laughs> I thought there was four. Is, there, is I, there I, I, that's There's what I, three. I, that, I, I couldn't tell you. That's, like, that's what three. I'm saying. So this far. Is a, this Expendables is why, like, four is still in production. It's, it's it's hard not to make fun of this shit sometimes. Oh, Tony Jaws in it. Like you, God damn it! You you almost do you, like I almost feel bad. It's like low hanging. It's like low hanging fruit. It's like fighting a drunk person. You know, I'll, you ever got like you, you ever got into a fight with like a like a, a super drunk person and like realize like it was just like fighting a toddler. And have you ever got like, Have you ever got into a fight with Tony Jaw while drunk? That's possible. That maybe. Says the guy who watches okay. cocaine bear wait a minute wait seat. a minute because cocaine bear was a fantastic movie all right that was art i would say cocaine bear qualifies cocaine more bear art than like fucking any of those like cocaine sequels. bear was a fantastic movie a historical drama as was violent night that was a as, fucking awesome movie too like, i wouldn't say historical but yeah awesome movie um but cocaine bear was it was a true story. It was a char- it was a charming tale about a bear that falls in love with a white powdery substance called cocaine. All right, takes all your bad feelings and turns them into good feelings. Okay, you don't want none of this shit, Dewey Cox. 
All right. I mean, if if you, if you want a whole account, I could go hours on about how much I liked it. <laughs> I still have yet to watch it. Or do it. <laughs> or do it. Yeah. Oh, um, bullshit, Joe. All right. You've never you've never done the booger sugar, Joe. Bull I've never yeah. done. You know, the there's a require. There is a requirement <laughs> being on being in DD two fourteen gaming podcast. It's like you have, you have to have had at least one bad coke night in your life. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'll see your no. bad coke night with a bad acid trip. That's that's the best I can okay. give you. Okay. All right. All right. Fucking <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I'll be I'll, I'll be grinding my teeth, fucking looking out the window every three minutes while you're while you're melting into the couch, like having an existential crisis, right? Like, and then and then <laughs> and then do, then. Fucking a, fucking a. You know, so. <laughs> so okay, so uh, additional additionally to yellow jackets and and honestly, yellow jackets isn't actually like as bad as I make it sound. It's just I I laugh and I joke. At, at at the expense of that tv show because it is the part the part of it that is actually compelling is the fact that like everyone in that show is batshit crazy that actually does make it a little like pretty fairly compelling at times because you're like i really don't know what the fuck they're gonna do next because they're all literally like batshit <laughs> so like was that? Anywho, moving on uh we also watched a a a, a quite charming actually uh movie called murder mystery it, it came out in 2019 it's on i think it's on fucking netflix but well, not it's, it's got fucking sandler and uh jennifer, jennifer Aniston. Aniston. yeah it's actually not too bad the movie lost a few points with me because it got some shit got dragged out and there was different some of the uh some of the um what would you call them plot devices used were just a little too tropey for me and like where mm-hmm. I wanted the movie to be a lot more charming than it was, it was, it was charming at times, but I really wanted it to be more charming than it was. And it kind of, it started falling a little flat. I noticed that there is a sequel. Haven't seen the sequel yet. I was like, about to say was... that, you know, you, know, you know, they made a sequel to it, right? And you were just bashing movies with sequels. Yeah. And then like, it's like one of those, like, that's what, <laughs> that's what I'm saying. It's like, and this, this the, the funny part is, is like, I, I did kind of enjoy the movie, but it really wouldn't get that high of a score with me either. It's like, it'd be like, I'm still, I'm going to say like, this one would be more closer to like six and a half, seven, you know, where, where yellow jackets is like six, six and a half. This is going to, this is going to stand about the same place, six and a half, maybe seven at the most. And it really lost points because they, they, they kind of dragged it out. And it was like, and it got a lot, it got really tropey really quick. And then the, and the, the whole ending sequence was just kind of out there. And anywho, murder mystery, Adam Sandler, uh, Jennifer Anderson collecting your money freaking on netflix like it wasn't too bad i'll give it i'll give it you know an eh it was all right it was all right for an one eh. night it was an eh it was he all gives right it an eh. <laughs> it was like, it was about, it's like after you know when you, you get up after watching a movie and you're just kind of like oh well how how was it how, you know what'd you think yeah you know all right eh. we'll try again next time okay is it john is it time is it, is it oh, that yeah. time again I see you. I see you. I see you. It's it, never it, that time. No, you know what happened? The background was missing. And then you found the background? Yeah. Well, I had to I had to put it back. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm look not, at that. And now me and Squilini. Well, well, yeah. Now, yeah. Now, like, <laughs> hold on. John, are you pressing buttons again? <laughs> John, yeah. just just stop pushing buttons. No, <laughs> we're going to I'm going to try something. Oh, here we go. Oh, 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 here we go. Here we go. All right. Are we gonna are we gonna play are we gonna roll that beautiful bean footage? We got that? Or is that the uh no, no? Nobody's got it today? No? Jay's on his own. Go fuck myself. Is that what we're doing? It's because Squil because when we take our things off, play it now, Squilini. No. There we go. There we go. That was a lot better. All right. Well, pilgrims, it's been a while. Hope you all have been well. I'm sitting here at the convergence of the California, Kansas, and Oregon trails in Independence, Missouri. I hope you all have had a good couple of weeks. I'm excited to see you again. Boy, do I got a couple of stories for you. All right. Fucking a, fucking a, yeah. So this uh, this week uh, for the Roadhouse um, on Friday night, 
we had a daddy daughter dance. So, and believe it or not, due to my uh, prior occupation being, uh, you know, a soldier in the fucking army and being like gone and deployed all the time, uh, this was actually the very first time I have ever gone to a daddy daughter dance with either of my, uh, with either of my, my girls, but I got to take both of them. So that was really, really fucking cool. And so we had a good, we had a good evening. Uh, girls got to see a lot of their friends, you know, like outside of school hours, which is always fun. Um, got to dance with both of my daughters and had a good time watching them have fun and like run around. And then we, uh, we actually sat down and we, uh, got our picture taken together. So I'm looking forward to seeing uh, those prints, uh, when they come back. So yeah, that was daddy daughter dance. And then last night, me and my goddess, Nikki, oh boy, dude, guess who we got to see, John? Guess who we got to see? Are you guys there? Who? God damn it. <laughs> You're fine. <laughs> we got to see Jerry Cantrell of Alice in Chains fame. Okay. And it was, it was really, it was really, really cool to, to, to experience, you know, um, part of, part of like the legacy, you know what I mean? Like the, the with some of the music that I grew up with, uh, some of the music that became uh, the soundtrack to like uh, a lot of my time in the army, a lot of the, a lot of my time in Afghanistan, and to to get to hear it and and kind of see it live. Um, John, if you if you, it, or Joe, if you guys have a chance, can you pull up uh, the the uh, the picture that I sent earlier, the 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 JPEG of uh, the up, Uptown Theater? And uh, I just wanted I just wanted people to see. Here in Kansas City, like when, when you go see a show, depending on which venue you're at, and some of these theaters uh, downtown, you know the older ones, they all have this very like kind of like Victorian, like you know almost almost kind of like Wild Westy look to them. You know, it's very like you know old fashioned. You know, but that's like that's how old the fucking theaters are. And seeing Jerry Cantrell play play his heart out, you know, for for about an hour and a half, you know, was uh was a real was a real fucking treat. I uh, played played. Some very well known. Um, he played some very well known uh, Allison Chain song. Thank you for that, by the way. Very, very good. So yeah, you can see just kind of like the it's it's the, the 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 decor, you know. And that's like, and we were up in the balcony, that which you can't see in this picture, but we were up in the balcony, and just kind of observing it all, uh, kind of like you know slightly from a distance. And like, yeah, and see that's that's the Midland, that's the Midland right there, and so that, and that's actually front taken from the stage. So that would be if you're on the stage looking out into the crowd. That's the Midland Theater, and like that's that's kind of Kansas City's vibe, you know, especially with some of the older some of the older uh, buildings downtown, and that's like it's really fun. Oh, we got oh that's right, we got some footage. Can you uh can, can we turn the sound on on that? Is that possible? I don't remember which which uh, song this was, but I think Nikki, I can't hear that. Can you hear it? But yeah, that's that's Jerry Cantrell. Fucking, that was a fucking good show. So yeah, anywho. I got to take a little bit of a, a time, uh, a, you know, I got to time travel a little bit and take a trip back to my, you know, some, some of my youth, uh, some of my early 20s and a whole lot of time in the fucking army, all through the music of, you know, Jerry Cantrell and and uh, Allison Chains. He also did a he did a song where it was just three guitars and it was completely it was just, a, you know, it was a it was just three guitars playing. And that was the song. And that was like it was just a, you know, very, it was just a, an instrumental piece, basically. And that was really fucking cool to listen to. So like Jerry Cantrell is like always going to get fucking thumbs up for me. The guy he got uh, to sing with him sounded exactly like Lane Staley. So when they played the Allison Chain songs, it was like, I didn't even care if there were people standing up in front of us and we were sitting down, like I could, just, I could hear it. And so, and they, like, it sounded extremely fucking close to like, you know, what, Allison Chains fucking sounds like, you know, when you pop in, when you pop your CD, uh, you know, into your, into your fucking piece of shit car. Right. So anywho, Jerry Cantrell fucking, that was the roadhouse dude, daddy daughter dances and freaking Allison Chains freaking flashbacks. Right. So that was a, uh, it was a good weekend, good weekend in, uh, in Jay's neighborhood. So guys, I'll, uh, I'll get ready and uh, turn it back to you. I think I might go refill my coffee. John, do we have any uh, commercials today? We do. We do. Really? I'm trying to figure out where our background went. <laughs> the green one. But yeah, I got a commercial for you right now. Okay. Uh, I'll play two of them. I'll play two. Of I was going to say, I'm going to try, I'm going to try to hurry. I'm going to go. I'll turn my video off for a second, but I'll be right back. I'll play two of them. Don't, don't you're not turn your video off. You're good. Are you fascinated by the intersection of artificial intelligence and the human mind? Do you want to stay up to date with the latest developments in this rapidly evolving field? Look no further than the Artificial Mind Podcast. 
Hosted by veterans Jeremy Strobridge and Jonathan Sanchez, each episode delves into a new and exciting topic, from the creation of images through AI to the impact of nightmares on our mental and physical well-being, and much more. They use cutting-edge technology, like Midjourney, to uncover new insights and perspectives on the world of AI. So, whether you're a tech enthusiast, a student, or just curious about the future, tune into the Artificial Mind Podcast and join Jeremy and Jonathan on an exciting journey into the unknown. Available now on your favorite podcast app. Get ready for a journey into the world of video game lore with you, me, and lore. Hosts Brandon and Kenny take you on a thrilling adventure through the background stories of your favorite games. Currently, they cover two of the biggest titles, Halo and Death Stranding. Learn about Master Chief's battles in Halo and uncover the secrets behind the mysterious world of Death Stranding. These games offer more than just action and adventure, they offer rich stories that are waiting to be explored. Join Brandon and Kenny as they dive deeper into the lore and bring you the insights and information that make these games truly unforgettable. Subscribe to you, me, and Lore now and never miss a beat in the exciting world of video game lore. Join the army today and be part of something bigger than yourself. You'll get to do important work, like filling out paperwork and scrubbing toilets, but hey, it's all part of the job. Whether you're working in an office or in the field, you'll be part of a team that is dedicated to serving their country and occasionally saving the world from aliens or supervillains. And who knows, you might just get to shoot a gun someday. Just make sure you aim for the target and not your own foot. So, if you're looking for a career that will challenge you and give you the chance to wear a snazzy uniform, join the army today and become a part of a proud and occasionally wacky tradition. It never gets old. I, I love never it. Gets old. I, I love it. I love it. That's one of my favorite things right there. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely, so, dude. All right. So what we got today, um, that's not supposed to be making that noise. What, uh, what we got today, we're just going to, we're at 60 minutes now. We said it was going to be just a little bit long today. I think we're going to hit the two hour mark today, guys. But we just want right. to give an origin story. It's origin day. You know, we decided, hey, maybe, you know, you, if you want, if as, and if you have any questions, and I'm talking about, like, if there's any questions between, oh, the Chase Roadhouse logo is still there. Whoops. Yes. If there's any questions that you guys who are watching that want to ask, or even, like, if there's questions amongst the three of us that we want to ask about each other, you know. Sure. You know, be be sad, be happy, <laughs> do it is, but Who's going first, yep. or am I going to have to spin the wheel on this one? Well, it's up to you guys, freaking. I'm, I'm, I'm always, I'm always curious to hear everyone's stories. So it's, it's fun, it's fun for me. <laughs> I like listening sometimes. So, John, yeah. why don't you start? Why don't you start, John? All right. Um. Yeah. So, born and raised in New Jersey, the greatest state in in. The East Coast original. Oh, OG, oh, it's hey, we're OG thirteen, okay, and we're OG OG. All right, one of the original colonies. Been there, been there the whole time. <laughs> We've been here since day one, baby. Since day negative one. Yeah, day negative. But you know, grew up here. You know, I had a fascination for comic books, um, heavy metal, rock music. You know, but new at that time I was growing up, I was listening to new metal, corn. Mud vein, you know, the slip, not the works. I was going to a lot of concerts. I enjoyed it, but I still didn't know. You know, I think at that time, during that time, I still wanted to be something cool. I wanted to be in a rock band. I wanted to be, I want, I, I kind of always wanted to be a cop, but there was always something I've always wanted to be, and that was a soldier. And, but I never worked towards being a soldier. You know, there was nothing that I ever did that showed that I wanted to be there, except that I was in the ROTC when I was in high school, you know, and, did and you like, did you like uh, the ROTC? Did you like doing that? I was not mentally prepared for it. Okay. That's fair. That's a fair response. I was not like, because like, for example, I didn't respect it. I didn't respect it. Okay. And the best example that I could give to that is that we had to do and this is and I look back at it now and I'm looking at it like at what I'm thinking about at this moment. I'm just like, wow, you know, like I really, you know, these are experienced things, things that you do when you're kids, when you're younger and they were funny. But then like I really knew then like I was not ready 
for it because the discipline that my gunny had gunny martinez who was a fucking asshole by the way <laughs> complete fucking asshole oh so you were marine corps rotc yes yeah it was marine corps rotc and um what was interesting is that the discipline that he had he lived i think he lived like less than a mile away from the school and he would leave the school to use the bathroom he would hold in his shit and go home he would not shit anywhere else other than home when we would had to do like little functions he wouldn't even use the bathroom like this guy's discipline was so unhealthy you know like it, it was weird but like i respected that you know sure. but i still wasn't ready to want to be in the military some people are just shy poopers yeah yeah okay, that works too <laughs> You know, so, you know, I had some trouble in school. I wasn't the greatest student. I, I got kicked out of one school, which was Emerson High School. And I got kicked out of that school because I wasn't, I, you know, I was doing good in my tests, but I wasn't showing up to school and I wasn't doing my homework, you know, but I, but I was a pretty good student. I didn't, I didn't harass anybody. I was not a fighter. I tagged shit up a lot, I you mean, know, don't, don't we all? Don't yeah, we you know, I tagged shit up a lot, but that was really like the extent of it. And, you know, throughout that time, I kind of focused on wanting to get into music. I was in several heavy metal bands after, you know, after I, you know, throughout my high school years and after I was in Sleeper Cell, Last Breath Taken, Tomorrow Leads to Nothing, Side Effect. Fuck yeah. I fucking you know love those names dude those are yeah. fucking badass and, names. and tomorrow the, the, leads to nothing like, tomorrow leads to nothing was that there was a lot of there was a lot of drama with that but that was like my first last, band last breath taken i fucking love it dude. so like, last dig it like so last <laughs> breath taken was actually it's a tie between them and sleeper cell and what's funny about like last breath taken is that we were the more like pantera like you know we even had a song that had that we were influenced by the song domination we used the breakdown from domination in one of our songs which was really cool and you know rest in peace ray ray rivas who was the the guitar player and uh, you know that was a fun band but my favorite band to be in was sleeper cell on top of the fact that we played the day before september 11th and like there was some questionable stuff that was going on because a band named sleeper cell was going to be across the river from manhattan in cliffside park the day oh, before 9 11 in a right. certain year so you know i i you know can't get into some of that stuff there but there was some interesting thing that that things that happened in that in that in that community basically yeah in that community that happened so you know we yeah. my my heavy metal presence was awesome and i loved every second of it but then it shifted you know there was something that you know the, the passion was dying for me because i still mm -hmm. didn't know what i wanted to do in my life and then I met my wife, you know, I got, got an apartment with my best friend, Mike, met my wife, and we've been together since 2008. And, you know, to kind of put the story short, you know, still going through jobs, trying to figure out who I wanted to be, what I wanted to be. <clears throat> and then, you know, my wife, you know, we, she got pregnant and I told her, hey, I signed, we're talking, it's like June. And I was like, hey, in April, I signed the contract to go to the army. And, you know, there, there was a lot of contention there. But at that time, I still yeah. didn't know who I wanted to be or what I wanted to do. And but I knew then what I needed to do was to give my my wife an upcoming child a place to live and a life to look forward to. And so I joined the army. And, you know, during that time in the army, I'm not going to say I was the perfect soldier because I, I don't think anyone is the perfect soldier. Well, there are there are a few. There's 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 there are there there's always going to be high performers. And the, yeah. high, the high performers mm -hmm. are, are probably about <laughs> as close as you can get to saying like a perfect soldier. But even there's a lot of high performers who are, who are also fucking toxic as shit. Yeah. So like so like out of out of that percentage of like high performers, you still have like a percentage of that. They're they're still fucking shit bags because yeah. they fucking they're toxic as fuck, right? So it's like so even when even like there is no perfect soldier. There's no perfect soldier. No such yeah. thing. So yeah. Don't and, be too, don't be too and, hard on yourself. Oh, absolutely, right? absolutely. And what was interesting about this time, like I want I knew I wanted to be in the army. I didn't know what I wanted to do, but I was you know I knew about Audie Murphy. I knew about you know the um. 
Bob Ross's uh, moral dilemma with the Air Force. Mm -hmm. You know, these are things that I read about growing up that, you know, that I've always been interested in and things that I was like, you know, could that be me? Could I be as frustrated as Bob Ross was? Could I be as as heroic as as Mike Murphy was? You know, these were Marty always questions. You know, and Audie Murphy. You know, there was Mike Murphy and Audie Murphy. Oh, you're talking about Mike. Okay. You, you know, Audie, you said Audie no, Murphy well, well, no, but I did read about I did I did read about Audie Murphy with Ben, and coincidentally, I ended up in Fort Benning, where, right? You know, Audie Murphy is practically like worshipped there. Well, yeah. You know, people. Well, yeah, it's, it's Audie Murphy, dude. Like, yeah. You know. So you know, so so you know, even though I still didn't know, but I, I ended up, you know, I was first, I first, you know, signed up for infantry, bitched out of it, you know, and I went into water filtration. Three months later, my recruiter told me, Oh, yeah, that job was given away, so you're gonna be a cook. And I was like, uh 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 fuck it, let's do it, let's go. Um, no hesitation. I didn't question it, I was just like, you know what? I'll have a uniform, I'll be able to provide for my family. What the fuck does it matter? what i do and i went in and i did it and in boot camp i had i had a dilemma where hurricane sandy i was in boot camp when hurricane sandy happened and my wife was sleeping in the salon in the salon with my newborn child who i've only seen maybe three or four times before i even left for boot camp sure you, you know so i tried to leave i tried to fuck everything up and my drill sergeant called my wife my drill sergeant called my wife and and she said he doesn't have a place to come back to if he leaves my mother said the same thing my father said the same thing my friend said nope i had burned a lot of fucking bridges before i went to the <laughs> army i had pissed off a lot of fucking people kind of like an old western in a way where you leave where you leave the the town of blackwater because you really fucked up and you can't really, go back like, there anymore. Really like shit on yourself and your reputation, yeah. right? Like, I I was a so tell, us, tell us about the redemption. Tell us about the redemption. Well, the redemption was forcing <laughs> myself to learn discipline and forcing myself to stay where I needed to be to provide for what needed to provide. Because even then, during the time when I was in boot camp, I was not in a mentally good place. Uh, my marriage was not in a good place. I was not in a good place with my family, my friends. The only people that I knew at that moment were the people I was stuck in that trailer with for those three months. And yeah. because of that, it had it forced me to learn the discipline that I needed to be to start not to be a better person instantly, because that shit doesn't happen instantly, but to start the process of trying to become a better person. I like your and, drill sergeant. I like your drill sergeant. He, he had a, he, he, uh, he identified the problem very quickly and, and solved it very efficiently. Yeah. That, well. uh, that mm -hmm. his name is drill sergeant Elton Thomas. And let me tell you that, that guy was no, no was, yeah. Yeah. I was going to go. I apologize, John. I mean, yeah, yeah. Go ahead. That, go ahead. This, this, this guy was, yeah. This Elton, guy, Thomas. Elton Thomas. Drill sergeant Elton Thomas, who I believe now is a master sergeant. I do have him on Facebook, and if it wasn't for him, you know, if it wasn't for him, he, it, it, I, it, I probably wouldn't have never made it. You know, he he motivated me. He told me, you know, thank you, mom. Oh shit, my mom is watching. Thank you, mom. And you know, it, <laughs> and you know, it was it was a very, it was a trials and tribulation time for me because I did not know what the fuck I, what was going to happen to me. I didn't know. I, I was going to one of the most notorious units in the world. Uh -huh. I, did, I had no idea what was going to happen. I thought the moment I get there, I was going to get deployed and that was it. I didn't, I didn't think I was going to be a cook at all by the time I got to bending. I thought I, there was a lot of different things I heard. No, but I got there. It was a different yeah. time. It was, yeah. a, it was a different time, like in the, in the army. Mm -hmm. So, what yes. year? What, uh, what what year did you go to basic, and then? 2012 into 2013. So okay. I came home for Christmas Exodus, which okay. was actually a very major moment because I got mm -hmm. to rekindle a lot of things with my family. I got to spend Christmas with them, which is no better time to to you know make things right, you know. And it was it, that during that time, I finally realized what was important. But even then, you know, in the military, I did my time. I still had some some issues. I found out I had a major I found out that my allergic reaction to bananas was a lot worse than I had previously thought. You know, I learned that I can be smart and that the one thing that the army taught me. 
even through several article 15s for being overweight <coughs> yeah me being 240 pounds you know um you overcame that though too didn't you i overcame that i overcame an alcohol problem which gave me pancreatitis which led me to meet my first sergeant my my lieutenant colonel and um and your bc and your fucking and my, yep, on, on their first on their first day of work oh, great. in the hospital <laughs> okay and but and but the most important thing is i learned what friendship was all about and that no matter where you are no matter who you are like squilini and campbell here you could build a teamwork and a network through distance with the time that we have today and that's what i learned in the military and so after that i got out of the military i was really into gaming i had i got out because of my my dilemma with wanting to become a photographer or wanting to continue my career in the army and let the mental anguish get to me because it was getting to me and the problem was i didn't know how to not let it get to me right and, and so i got out you know and so i got out you know and i wanted to go to school which i went to school good only passed one class business 101 <laughs> You know, got that I one knocked out and got, yeah, got I, that one knocked out of the way, though. Yeah, that that one's good. So I don't have to take that one ever again. <laughs> you know, but I, you know, the, I do want to go back into college. But you know, I wanted to become a streamer. I wanted to become like Doctor Disrespect, and you know, we've all been there. You know, and I'm to say that we're there now, but not in the numbers that we that we projected when we were younger. It still makes me feel good because I wanted to become a game streamer. But it wasn't it wasn't the frustration or the impatience. It was me wanting to expand my knowledge and wanting to do more. And that's when I came into podcasting. And right. I started off with my first podcast, which was called Bong yeah. Rips and Video Games. You know, I've always been in the video game space, so I've tried to be and that didn't work out. And then um, then I came here into the DD214 podcast. You know, we started this together, Jay. And, you know, we're here now a hundred and three episodes technically, technically 103 but about a almost almost a couple a full, more almost a full year years worth of stuff before that yeah, so, yeah. like you know yeah and and even then like now i'm doing podcasting now and i'm doing several of them producing several editing for others yep. um giving advice and actually um i'm just gonna say guys there's going to be a clean sanchez master class coming out this year for if you want to be a podcaster on a budget um but We'll talk. Fucking we'll talk about that budget. another time. That's story of all of our lives, right? Yeah. Just so I mean, I mean, I'm coming to a point now where now I learned so much. I want to teach. I want to teach it now. And I think the best thing about what's going on with where I am in my life right now is that I have friends that support what I do. I have friends that help me with what I do. You know, I have, you know, people. You know, I have people who. I have different perspectives with. I have my military friends. I have my hometown friends. I have my gaming friends. You know, I have my acquaintances. I have the love of my life. I have my kids. I have my job, which is this. Sounds you know, like you have a, sounds like you have a uh, a healthy a healthy work life balance. You know yeah, I mean? that Russia. Sounds, that sounds Ru healthy. Russia could come in and nuke the shit out of New York right now, and we could die, and I would die happy because that's where I am right now. You know, that's good. That's good to hear, dude. You know, and and that and that's that's my origin story. You know, I like that. I like that. That's fucking good. Fucking hey, Joe. I mean, tell me mine's. The, uh, tell me about the MPs. <laughs> mine's definitely definitely a lot fucking different than uh, John's there. So. Uh, I was a uh, me. I, I'm a twin. Um, Jay Which and John did, found this out last yeah. week. Yeah, yeah we With, didn't. We did um, not know this until like literally last week. Like I was like, wait, you're actually a talking you're about movie? that's what you know? what made us do this fucking spin the wheel for discussion topics and shit and yeah. put origin stories on there. Just a little background to some behind the scenes shit for everybody that's watching and listening. Um, so I'm a twin. Was adopted. At six months old, taken at birth from birth parents for them being just complete shitheads. That's the best I can go is a closed adoption. I don't have much more information than what I found yeah. out from family that knew my birth parents anyways. Um, and my dad was an MP in the Army. My cousin 
a West Point graduate, grew up in a military family, adopted at six months, moved to Fort Bragg, um, family moved down to North Carolina and Fort Bragg when I was right about six and a half, seven months old, grew up here. Um, I was a fucking shithead in high school, but I did ROTC also, but it was army because at an army base, of course, that's going to be the more common one. Um, straightened up in high school because of ROTC. ROTC is actually what made me learn a lot more discipline and kind of grow up decided right at 9-11 i mean when 9-11 happened i was 13 14 years old and decided the day the towers were attacked because my dad was actually in dc for a fucking conference at the pentagon when that shit happened oh shit um luckily he was on his way in when the plane hit the pentagon so he was safe but we couldn't get any communication to him for fucking like four days. So Jesus mom Christ. and everybody were freaking out. I decided I was going to go in that day, stuck to it. My dad didn't think I was going to fucking make it through basic training. Like he had a bet with his, you with signed his up, fucking You buddies. signed up on 9-11? Mm-mm. Oh, shortly no. after? Because I was only 13 years old when 9-11 Oh, okay, happened. okay, okay. Sorry. Um, No, in 06, I was 17 getting ready to graduate high school slash college because they just started this early college program in North Carolina where you got your associate's degree with your high school diploma at the same time. Um, Signed up at 17 with an associate's in computer science. So I went to basic as an E4 in lovely Fort Leonard Wood fucking Missouri. Goddamn hell on earth. I don't know what's worse, Benning or fucking Leonard Wood. Um, they're they're both they're both kind of equally up there in my book. I'm not gonna like, <laughs> I've I've been been to both and spent plenty of time at both, and they you know they, got cussed out by my recruiter for fucking going MP when my ASVAP score could have put me in a a lot higher of a fucking job. <laughs> but I didn't want to do desk jockey work. We were in fucking combat zone at the time. MPs were a combat MOS. I wanted to go over and kick doors in and take out hajis um (laughs) that's that's what my fucking goal was they attacked us i'm gonna fucking kill them coming right Uh, after them (laughs) spent seven years in got through basic and mp school at leonard wood then right after my 10-day leave after fucking ait was shipped off to fucking jump school Completed that, and then right to fucking Iraq. When I like, I literally reported to my first duty station, and within three days had fucking orders. Wow. Spent. This was back when they were still doing fucking 12, 13, 14 fucking month deployments for combat MOSs. So So is it is it is it what you expected? Like, did you expect that to happen? Honestly, I didn't know what to expect because, you know, I I knew what my dad was going through from growing up, up until around that basically. point, from when 9-11 happened up until that point with rapid deployments and turnarounds and constantly back and forth. Um, I had a feeling because I was in a combat MOS, it was going to happen. Um I didn't expect, you know, three days after reporting to my first duty station to, okay, now we've got to get you all your gear, get you fucking turned around, ready to fucking fly over um, type of situation. Because I got my orders three days after reporting to my first duty station. A week and a half later, I was in the fucking sandbox. Holy shit. Like, that fucking fast of a fucking turnaround. (laughs) That's dope. Fucking trial by Um, fire, trial by fire right there. But during all this, you know, I I came back. Obviously, unit was on fucking downturn from just getting back. 
our sister unit was getting ready to go over me being high speed fucking you know at this point a little over two years in i decided i was volunteering to go back over and i just got fucking e5 because again going in at e4 turnaround time to get e5 is really fucking fast um I volunteered, went over with our sister unit to Afghanistan this time. Hell yeah. Did six months on that. No, I did. I did. Fuck. Just shy of 12 months on that fucking deployment. Came back. This time I actually was able to stay stateside for about two years before back over. I was going to say like, it's, it's, like, like when you came back from that second one, like you literally had more time deployed than like time in, 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 in the States, basically like after, yeah. after, after training, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, um, it was fucking insane. Um, I loved it though. Holy loved shit. It. Um, now you get a lot of experience too in, in the process of. Yeah. But yeah, but then you between, come home and you suck at, you suck at garrison army though. Like it's like, it, it's, it's a real extreme yeah. culture, culture shock coming back. Exactly. Come, yeah, that, I mean, yeah I, i'm not trying to step on you but yeah it's, it's being in garrison army is just complete fucking hell you like you like um, for, you like forget how to fucking march sometimes you know what i mean where you have to like fucking like fucking rewind your fucking brain you're like wait a minute step off with the left foot first you know what i mean like wait wait mm-hmm. what you know what i mean like go ahead joe i apologize so you know in between deployment one and voluntary deployment number two i enrolled back into college for an online program in uh, computer hardware engineering <laughs> completed my first and second semester while deployed <laughs> on that shitty fucking internet Fuck overseas yeah. came back was able to finish my bachelor's stateside and then went on to grad school and completed grad school while on my third deployment Since then, I've, you know, pretty much I've I've had some ups, I've had some downs. I now work in the IT field, and um, due to COVID, really what kind of got me into because I've always liked the game, I've always liked you know shit like this. Oh but yeah, COVID, COVID got me into streaming, and then that led me to YouTube fuckers, and here we are doing the fucking podcast. That's fucking funny. I love that. That's fucking. How, how long how long uh have you been out um i was medically separated in 2013 2014 okay so right around right around the time john's john's coming in like is like about john's the- coming yeah. in and i'm going you're, out <laughs> you're really transitioning out yeah okay i was just i was just curious about like the this the different timelines mm-hmm. so that's like that's pretty i love i also i love how like all three of us have things in common with each other but we're like not all like exactly the same you know what i mean so you know like, what you know it's interesting too that at some point me and jay were on fort bending at the same time at one point that's absolutely true. that's absolutely true we, when i was when i went to fort bending to reclass uh that was uh august of 2014 and yeah. i was there i was there until december and yeah, that was so, less than a mile away <laughs> yep there you go so freaking like yeah that's like yeah 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 that's fucking fun. And that's, that's an interesting thing about the military too because like you if you were stationed in some place, maybe I was training somewhere or mm-hmm. maybe yada, yada yada yada. There's always like, you know, there's always a little bit of overlap. Yeah. That's the beautiful thing about like when you have these military conversations with other oh, guys. Yeah. You're just like, "Oh yeah, well, I was there at this time." I'm like, "Oh, no shit. Like you remember when this happened so, at the class 6?" <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so so Jay, obviously it's it's your turn. Your go around here. Oh boy, I've got some questions when we get to your military stuff. Sure, <laughs> sure. Yeah, my 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 military career was eclectic. That was, I, that's a, that's probably the word I would use, eclectic. So, but probably not unlike myself. So yeah, no. Um, actually, similar origin story to uh, to, to to yours in in a, in a manner and form. I'm also uh, adopted. So a long, long time ago, in 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 the in in the wee months of early January fucking 1981 dude like I got I got birthed into this world kicking and screaming bathed in blood all right and two weeks later oh, yes. I was, two two weeks later I was given up for adoption and that's all like that's 
So like my family is basically like my family. Okay. Like that's, we'll, mm-hmm. we'll kind of start it right there. And then there's other stuff that uh, happens a lot later in my life related to that, but that is only kind of like recently occurred. So like it's been, my parents, uh, I was born in Kansas city, Missouri. Um, and my parents moved to a place called Tucson, Arizona in 1985. Uh, I was four. Uh, my baby sister was still a baby. Um, and she, I think she wasn't even, she was, uh, she was less than a year old. I think she was less than a year old when we moved. So, um, I remember, I remember I have like big snapshot memories of us, like moving to Arizona. And then that's where I did all of my fucking growing up. And I mean, all of it. So like elementary, middle, high school, you know, post high school, you know, era, all that shit. That was pretty much all Tucson or all like Arizona, basically. Um, we did a lot of vacations, uh, family vacations, like out here, uh, to Kansas city to see family and to, to visit. So I grew up, I was, I, I, I've been a lifelong Kansas city Royals and Kansas city chiefs fan. Um, although, although for, for colleges, I do root for the Arizona Wildcats because that's, that's there in Tucson and that's kind of how I grew up. So, so anywho, it's like in, in Tucson, I was like the only Royals fan for probably miles right here mm-hmm. in Kansas city. I'll probably be one of the only Arizona Wildcat fans for miles. So I get, I get to, I get to represent KC and Tucson. So that's kind of cool. Right. But Tucson, Tucson is definitely where I cut my teeth and definitely, um, through, through good, bad and ugly, uh, you know, happenings in life. Uh, it, Tucson is definitely what, what shaped and molded me the most. Um, I've got some wonderful, wonderful, wonderful people there still to this day. Um, we still make it a point to visit as often as, as possible, you know, which has turned into, unfortunately, like it's usually multiple years in between, but eventually we still make it back. We still make it to Tucson, uh, to see, a lot of a lot of my my homies and like the people that I grew up with, my brothers and sisters that I grew up with in Tucson that li- literally from the from some of them from from the playground, you know, like we we're talking about decades long interactions and and you know keeping up with each other and stuff like that. And so have a lot of a lot of good people um, in my life in Arizona. But Arizona was not as I got older uh, after high school in my early twenties uh, through again through a lot of good, bad, and ugly. Okay. Um, I, I was very restless and I felt that I did not belong in Tucson and I did not belong. I, I'd never really felt that the, the passion of growing up in Tucson was eventually supplanted by the passion of wanting to, wanting to get out. And as much as I love the, the beauty of the Sonoran desert, me and me and Tucson stopped fitting very well together, you know? So like as a town, as a location, as an atmosphere, I wanted more. And I had always daydreamed of coming back to Kansas city. You know what I mean? Kansas city was like my, my like seven cities of gold. You know, like it was, a, it was a myth except it fucking existed. I knew it existed because every once in a while my family would go on a fucking road trip and we drive there. Right. And so this dream I was chasing of Kansas city of living in Kansas city was eventually freaking achieved. And then it was a very rudely snatched for me about six months later. <laughs> and I, I found myself driving back to Tucson at 28 years old, like on a two day fucking road trip, you know, to, to go live with my parents for the first time in almost 10 years. And I'm like sitting there by the wheel, like, what the fuck am I going to do? Oh my fucking God. <sighs> like motherfucker. You're like, you're, you're three months shy of being 29. What the fuck are you going to do with your life? You know, it was one of those like really sad, you know, take, take a moment, take a bro moment for yourself and, you know, cry whatever you need to cry out because tomorrow you need to grow your fucking dick back and fucking figure something the fuck out. And that was like, and that, that was not, by the way, that was not the first life moment I'd had like that. This was that life moment where it was like, okay, bro, now you're fucking 28. You're almost 29. You're really going to be fucked here in a couple of years. If you don't do something quick and you need to make it happen fast, like not, not fucking, not fucking tomorrow fast, fucking, three weeks ago fast like you need to figure something the fuck out you were on the brink i was beyond i was beyond the brink my life had my life at that moment had functionally the 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 floor had fallen out from underneath my feet and i was still in free fall there's like i had not hit any any semblance of a bottom and it got scary because you know when when i think when we live in when we live our lives in fear a lot of times the fear uh the fear fucking drives us but it also fucking causes us to to make bad choices and decisions. Yes. Yeah. So I, 
know, absolutely. I'm I'm sure you can see where this is leading. Like I went as soon as I got back to fucking Tucson, fucking went to a recruiter like literally the next day, and I was like, if you guys can get me in the fucking army, dude, like I will leave as fucking soon as you need me. And like, cause I did not I did not want to be back in. I don't want anybody to hear this the wrong way. I love Tucson, Arizona. I'm extremely proud to say that I grew up there and like still have brothers and sisters there. Um, I'm proud of the giant fucking chip on my shoulder that it gave me. You know what I mean? But at this moment in time, that it was the last place on earth I wanted to be. I, fe- I, I really felt I didn't belong and I didn't want to be. I feel back that. In Tucson. Yeah. I did, I did not want to go back. I felt like I was going home a failure. And with, with my, this is again, like really, functionally through no fault of my own i did not i did not really you know um i did not freaking um i don't know what the what what the word would be i did not um i did not start the chain of events that occurred that led to me driving back to fucking arizona with my tail between my legs put it that way i did not initiate i did not initiate that sequence of events it was done unfortunately like to me if that makes sense so you know anywho recruiter fucking says well you got to retake your fucking asbab Cause it's been, it's been, it's been 10 years since you got out of high school. It's been, Jesus over, Christ. It's been over 10 years since you fucking took the last one. So we got to retake that. But after, after, you know, I, I retook the ASVAB once that was done, all I had to do is fucking go to MEPS and pass MEPS and pass MEPS, which I did. And then after, after MEPS, all I had to do was fucking wait. I don't know what it was like a month and a half, barely. I think I got back to Arizona in, in the first week of October in 2009, I went to basic training in January of 2010. So I, I was able, in fact, to make it like by by the hair of my chinny chin chin. You made it happen, and stay and stay out of trouble. In the meanwhile, with a lot of rage and 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 just psychological hurt going on, you know what I mean? Like over my 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 you know my my sob story of a freaking life at the time, right? Yeah, it was so, like it's it's almost sounds like you know there was a chapter that you finished and you didn't know how to write the next book, and you're just like, I think I need to yeah do it, something it, drastic. It's well, it was, you, you, you only get you. I, I want to say, like, you know, me- metaphorically speaking, of course, in life, every once in a while, you get a chance to hit the reset button every once in a while. It's not necessarily it's not necessarily uh, healthy to do it a lot, but it's also not necessarily healthy to never do it if you if given the opportunity. And so I was able to, in fact, like literally like slam the slam the fucking emergency brake, you know, stop the car. And fucking turn that motherfucker into a, diff- a completely different, onto a different, completely different road. And then fucking like jam on the fucking accelerator and hit, you know, I just hit the reset button and fucking yep. jam on the accelerator again. And like, so yeah, I didn't have, really have a lot of time as far as like maybe grieving or grieving my, my situation is concerned, but going to basic fucking like three months later, sure as shit fucking helped. You know what I mean? It gives yeah. gave, gave me a lot of perspective. Um, I joined initially as a, uh, a mechanic, basically I was a, construction equipment repairer so i i did my basic training and actually my ait at fort leonard wood uh like like where joe was talking about and then i ended up getting stationed at fort leonard wood um Mm. i was in fact i was in fact somewhat of a high performer uh especially as a mechanic initially uh i i was a uh, i was believe it or not i was distinguished honor graduate in uh my ait and then uh there's a they give out a a leadership award and it's it, that's as vo- as voted on by the class, and so it's basically like whoever gets the most votes, is, you know, gets the leadership award. I was given the leadership award, so the only two awards that they gave out in AIT, I got both of them for the class that I was in. So I was somewhat of somewhat of a high performer during training, and then as I got I got stationed at Fort Leonard Wood, there was there happened to be a, a force comm unit, you know, and it was a it was a uh, it's called it was called a. Um, um, Maneuver Enhancement Brigade, and these were these were created during the height of Iraq and Afghanistan in the, in the mid two thousands. These Maneuver Enhancement Brigades were created to be a a fully functioning support brigade for a fully functioning, uh, B, you know, infantry BCT. Does that make sense? Yes. So like, yes, that makes the, abs- that makes per- a lot of sense. Br- the entire brigade was fucking engineers, MPs, fucking signal. Okay, like literally like, essentials, essentials, maneuver, man, it, maneuver support. It's maneuver support base. It's called maneuver support. And that's like, so the maneuver enhancement brigade is what I fell into. Anywho, uh, I was with the engineers because that was my, that was my, my MOS was I was basically a mechanic for engineer vehicles. And I, I had about a year on station before I volunteered to go uh, transfer to a different battalion and go on a, on a deployment. 
I wasn't, I was chosen along with like five, like literally somewhere between four and six other people total to go on this deployment. And they, I was a PFC at the time and uh, they, they took, they took me. And so I went to this new unit <laughs> who had ar- already done a, all their training. Like they, they'd been in a training cycle for, you know, however, six months, a year. I don't know. Cause I, I just showed up and two weeks later we were on a plane to Afghanistan. And Holy so like, I, didn't really, I didn't have any time with the, the dudes, um, but that was okay. And then I spent my, my first deployment was in fact, it was, it was a year, it was 12 months. So I went in June of 2011 uh, and came home, came home in June of 2012. And I was a mechanic attached to uh, combat engineers uh, conducting route clearance operations in RC West Afghanistan. So I spent a year with combat engineers doing combat engineer shit. And that was like, it was very uh, eye opening. It was, I, I use this term loosely sometimes. So I don't want anybody to get the wrong idea, but I, I had a lot of fun and I enjoyed it. And I enjoyed, um, I enjoyed having a purpose and, and, and seeing the, seeing the results of us being in this country, like little girls being able to walk to and from school, little girls being able to attend school. Right. There were a lot of, uh, in, 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 uh, we were in a city called Herat, uh, quite a bit during, towards the, towards the end of the deployment. And in this city, sometimes the women would, would, they wouldn't wear, uh, like burkas. They would wear, they would cover their heads, but you could see their faces. You know what I mean? When mm-hmm. they, and they'd start get, you know, they were getting a little bit braver because we were fucking there. And if they, if, so, if, if, if they fuck with us, you know, we fuck, we fuck really hard back. You know what I mean? When, when we get mm-hmm. fucked with over there. So it's like people were getting a little bit fucking braver. And so, like, that was my first deployment experience, basically. What were you going to say, Joe? So, funny enough, when you went on your first deployment and landed in Afghanistan, I had just left Afghanistan. Left? I'd yeah. probably been out for, like, two weeks right. by the time June wow. 2011 rolled yeah. around. Yeah. Yeah. And you, and you, when you're deployed, when you're gone, you, you learn a lot, and it, 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 cha- it changes things a little bit. But going back to Garrison Army, um, I got switched into a, a different engineer company. Uh, it was a, a 12 Charlie unit, which is they, they did. They built the bridges. And I spent the next two years uh, in that company, madly trying to either join special forces or get reclassed over to the infantry because all I wanted to do was go back to Afghanistan. Mm-hmm. So I spent like the next two years of my life in a, in a mad fucking scramble to align, align myself and my career back up, into combat the the combat arms uh profession basically like like the like the the one either either the dudes with the blue cords or the dudes with the funny green hats either either fucking way because i knew Mm -hmm. i knew those were the the quickest easiest ways back to afghanistan yeah that's what i wanted to do after that and that's you know take take it for what it is i'm not a fucking really cool i'm not a fucking tough guy i just i i found something that i was really good at naturally and a lot of the elements of deployments that you might say otherwise bother people, uh, I was very at home at home in, and I and I felt a lot more comfortable there, oftentimes than I did in garrison. And so that's it's kind of a bitter pill for some people to swallow, but I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. I, I really it, it, I, 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 that's about as honest as I can put it is that I I enjoyed my time in war. And I, and that it's not a, like, yeah, it's a, it's kind of a hard pill to swallow, but it, that was my experience. And I don't know how to, I don't necessarily even know how to, how to quantify that with myself. It's in, it's you in, know? it's in your blood. Well, that's, I mean, that's kind of why, you know, got, like got, you were trying to get away way. from yeah being an engineer so you could get into a combat arms thing. So you can well, the, and, go and on 12 that's Bravos. Yeah, 12 I Bravos went and got my jump wings. That's yeah. why I went and did my jump wings because yeah, I knew. And With 12, that, I was going to go more. 12 Bravos and 12 Charlies are, are combat MOSs, but I wanted to, like, whereas where engineers start leading the way, you know, when we need, like, roads cleared or paths cleared or a freaking something, uh, you know, uh, some kind of a structure freaking needs to be breached, you know, that's where engineers lead the way. The entire rest of the time, the, the, the entire U.S. Army revolves around the fucking infantry. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it made more sense. I had, a, I had a sergeant major right before I reclassed and went, went down to Benning. Um, I had a sergeant major actually ask me, he's like, he's like, why don't you become a combat engineer? And I was like, no, nah, I'm good, man. Like I, was, I spent a year in Afghanistan, I was, you know, 
much much love to my sapper sapper brothers and sisters you know what i mean like like has nothing nothing to do with anything other than i knew it was gonna be a lot quicker if i just went to the infantry you know what i mean <laughs> like the, the turn the turnaround time so to speak like everybody everybody and their mom and the engineers like wants to deploy like they like when they come around for freaking volunteers like i got lucky getting selected for that deploy that first deployment i went on i was yeah. lucky because there was no shortage of people fucking like literally like mad scrambles please get me please get me back over there so how so, many did you end up doing after i reclassed to the infantry uh i d- i did two more so i had i did a nine month rotation to kandahar uh in t- the in t- 2016 and i did a nine month rotation to uh, helmand the helmand province um in 2018 that was my last one so in total i have uh, 30 months 30 months t- you know time spent in Afghanistan, basically two and a half years of my life I've spent in Afghanistan. Um, yeah, because you you went on your first deployment right after we or right when we pulled out of Iraq. So just about like we, we like we we're still kind of in Iraq, but it, but Iraq wasn't really the deployments happening. It was like you if you uh, were, ch- chances were like you know better than nine out of ten. If you were, if you were getting deployed, you were going to Afghanistan. Occasionally, people would go to freaking like Syria. Still, still a couple places in Iraq maybe a couple places in fucking Africa, but more better than better odds than nine out of 10 is like, if you got deployed, you're going to Afghanistan. And I got, mm-hmm. I went to Afghanistan three times. So that was like, and I, you know, again, I, I, I'm, I, I felt a lot more at home. I think after I came home after my last one, uh, I became an instructor at the, at the NCO Academy at Fort Carson. And that helped me kind of, unwind a little bit and take a knee and kind of like take inventory of myself um because now i was approaching the rapid end of my 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 army career but the army book was closing on me and i saw it coming a mile away so i kind of like had time to a little a little bit of time to prepare but you know but it gave me a chance to to take a knee and drink water being an instructor so I, i was very fortunate that i was able to um use my final couple of years in the army giving back to the, giving back as much as I could to the the soldiers around me who were about to become NCOs and take my place when I was gone. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. And just try to impart any knowledge and wisdom I, I could share with them to hopefully keep them and their, and their, and the soldiers they're in charge of alive someday. You know what I mean? If, if, if it ever comes to it, because that's kind of like the idea when you become an NCO, you know, it's like, it's, it's on you. And I, I enjoyed having that responsibility. I was very fortunate. I had a very fortunate army career for for as much moving and shaking as i did i was extremely fortunate um had a, a very storied career uh, in, a, in a sense to start to start as like in, in a in an mos that was basically support for support and to end you know on on somewhat of a high note in the infantry you know 12 years later after joining you know after after joining you know when you're you're, you're already approaching 30 you know what i mean when you join and to still have 12 years and say that, like, I did my fucking best every goddamn day and nobody can take any of that shit from me. Like, that yeah. was like, I did, you know, like, hey, Ma, I did one thing fucking right. <laughs> if I did nothing, else, if I did everything else wrong, I did this one thing right. And I kept, I like to think I assisted in keeping a lot of people alive and getting a lot of people home. And that was the whole fucking oh, yeah. point. That's the whole fucking point. So I feel like I did okay. But that's basically like, and that's kind of where we're at. Like John, John and I met in the midst of my transition. Like I was getting ready to start getting out. Like I didn't know, I didn't know exactly if I was even getting out or yeah. not when you and me first met, but it became very apparent very quickly that like my career was rapidly coming to an end and I, I might as well just freaking get on, get on with it and, and, and do, do the, uh, do the life thing again. It was very interesting. It was a very interesting time. It was, yeah, that's a, that's a very polite way of putting it, John. It's a very polite way of putting it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Cause I, I, I do remember that time and you were literally like in between, like in between. Yeah. I, it and was you, like, I, I, I was and like you had, and you had problems. positive, you had positives, positives and negatives that evened out on both sides too. Like it was like, Oh yeah. There was, a, there, know, I, so. I, I, I was literally like inhabiting the ghost world for a little while, dude. Cause it was just like. <laughs> I was, I was, I was caught between two worlds. Everything was, you know, kind of like, kind of like how I got into the army, you know, stuff was starting to like collapse in around me. And it was like, well, this is, this is obviously, uh, this is obviously, uh, uh, Cody, dude, you're, you're going to need to stop that. That's, that's really rude, buddy. I love you, but you're going to need to stop that. 
Look at that, Jay. You got you got a, you got a question from Max would, Mraz. Oh, uh, would you have chosen a different MOS that would have better translated to this? Actually, uh, it's funny. It's funny you mentioned that. Since I have gotten out, uh, I've gotten more use out of my infantry MOS than I have the the, the mechanic one, and that's because, uh, <laughs> like, I, I I get to do security at you know. There's a couple of cathedrals here in Kansas City. One's called uh, Kauffman Stadium, where the Royals play, and the other one's called Arrowhead Stadium. <laughs> called the cathedral. Where fucking they are, they are the cathedrals of Kansas City, dude. And I get to do, I get to do fucking security. I get to do security for you know for during the games sometimes. And when I started doing security last year for the Royals, I did not even ask them <laughs> for like a particular position or anything. But they they did ask for my DD two fourteen, and so like I I pr- produced a copy, and they uh. <laughs> they um the very first game I worked for the Kansas City Royals they put me on the field like I was I was yeah, on field did. security like the guy sitting next to the dugout you know dodging dodging foul balls you know like making sure nobody gets you know silly or Wanda the kissing bandit you know doesn't make it onto the field or whatever like that's and that's because I'm assuming that's because of my infantry pedigree that is contained on my uh DD214 my DD my DD two fourteen is it's really funny when you when you look at that piece of paper and you see everything that's on there, if they got if they get it correct, it pretty much tells your entire fucking story, and like in a, in very short in very short terms, you know what I mean. And what my DD two fourteen says is probably what got me a position where I got I get to be on field security for the Kansas City Royals from time to time, not every single game, but from time to time. If you look close enough on TV when they do like the 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 you know the zoom out you know or whatever. You might see your old pal Jay, dude, on on uh, Royals baseball. So fucking look for me this season. So yeah, yep. fucking a. Well, that was that was really good. I mean, we got to learn a little bit about each other. Yeah, and yeah, now, yeah. Um, I was just nice. Was nice. yeah. So I mean, now we got news, and then we're final thought, and then we'll get out of here. Um, yep. really small little tidbits. What you got? Uh, first GTA so- Six. Someone bought. Well, before I get to that, uh, eleven cities have been revealed. For 11? GTA 6. 11 cities? Yes. That sounds massive. Uh, Not just ci- one like normal. 11. Yeah. 11. That's the, the, ci- that's the cities and lot. towns include the following. Ambrosia, Cooperhead, Domed Hills, Ephanfenica, Hamlet, Lake Leonida, L.O., Port Gellhorn, which I'm going to get to in a second, Red Hill, Sundown and Yorktown. In addition to these named locations, there are supposedly special locations like strip malls where players can shop, a forest where you can hunt, a beach plaza where you can enjoy the sun, and drag strips where you can drag race. This sounds similar to GTA 5, just kind of on a little bit of a bigger level. Like where there were little hamlets, you know, like throughout the map, you know, where there's like people living there or whatever. You know, like... Uh, As you're like driving into the mountains in the forest, like past the like past the uh, the army base or whatever, right? Yeah, so that's like th- that. That's almost what this sounds like, just on a little bit of a bigger. Yeah, level. just some just some information. And now, what's funny about Port Gellhorn is that someone thought it'd be a good idea to buy PortGellhorn.com, thinking that now in today's age you can't pay an extra couple hundred dollars and they can't take the fucking website from you, because that's what you can do. You go on GoDaddy.com and if you want like DD214.com and it's right. taken, you spend a couple couple more dollars. And you fucking buy it off of them. Um, right. Apparently, apparently, this is what, what what Rockstar did to this person who thought that they were going to get a big payday. Like they thought it was 1999 and McDonald's.com just came out. Um, it's not happening, sir. Um, another news counter. This is big news. Counter Strike Two has been officially revealed. Counter Strike, mm-hmm. a major a game that's been around for such a long time. I was going to say, how old is Counter Strike? Like, counter- like. <laughs> Like, what's the actual fucking, like, age on Counter-Strike? It's been around so fucking long, dude. Like, this is kind of crazy. A 2000. It is 23 years old. That's what I fucking thought. Now, what's interesting about this is that I didn't even put into perspective that there's never been an actual sequel sequel to (laughs) Counter-Strike. You know, there's been uh spin offs, there's been versions, there's been builds, there's been all this stuff. You know, rip-offs, basically, yeah. Yeah. And Counter-Strike 2 is, is I mean, this is big news. I mean, and they're saying that it's coming to console. 
So with that being said, are we finally is are we finally going to have an enjoyable shooter on console now with Counter Strike? Um, Arma, Arma's, Arma's Arma coming. Great. Arma's coming soon on console. Arma Four. If they could, dude, if they could fix the mechanics of the the like the POV of the when you like when you're like in individually like outside of a vehicle in Arma, Arma would be the best game ever. Because yeah. then as soon as you like dismount a vehicle, you're you know it's like almost like Call of Duty. That because be it has everything. It has it everything. Does. It does, and it also and then that the, the, the reason people nerd out on Arma is because it's realistic enough. Like you can't just run and gun. Yeah. Like they, they, it's not this. You know, it there is are not, people sitting there for hours in an attack, waiting, just waiting, just waiting. Like if you get if you got a, if you got a tank formation, man, you can't necessarily just show yourself all the time because you will get targeted. And killed immediately. Dude. That's what that's what happens in war. Yeah. So right? Like is, that's you know, yeah. like so this is this is really big news for Counter Strike. Absolutely. A new Xbox console is in the works and it already has a code name. At Xbox Anaconda is the next console project being worked on by Microsoft. Anaconda, right now, huh? this is all Anaconda. We, yeah, this Ooh. is all we know right now. Now I, I, I love suspect, the name. I suspect and expect that playstation will f- come back with something within the next couple months saying that they're working so. on something as well i i know so because they just can't let it go and right. you know um nintendo yeah, he's got such a hard on with yeah. anything now, microsoft does right now. now correct me if i'm wrong squalini there is a major talk right now that another nintendo console is coming out within the next couple years <laughs> so it's it's kind of back and forth because since yeah. the switch is released it's been <laughs> fucking Jay. Um, oh so since the switch is released and now we're going on. That was funny as hell. Almost what? Eight, nine years since the switch came out. Yeah. Um, every year there's been talk about a pro version of the switch. And so far we just what got we've the seen OLED is. You know, we had the Switch, then we had Revision 2, which was the same hardware, but with a bigger battery, so it had a little bit better battery life. Then we got the Switch Lite, which was just the Switch in a handheld-only mode. Then we got the OLED, which gave us a bigger screen by, like, 0.2 inches or some shit like that, with an OLED screen versus an LED panel, so you get truer blacks better color uh accuracy stuff like that um the pro the switch pro talk has fired back up and at the same time there's also talks of this other console that's going to be in the switch lineup interesting Um, so here's the thing nintendo really hit hit the nail on the head with the switch um after the wii u which the way they touted the wii u was now you can play your games on the go or on a tv which that really wasn't the case what's going on campbell um yeah, we talked about that at the beginning of the episode. Uh, yeah, you'll have to uh, you'll have to rewind back to the beginning after uh, after we stop going live, uh, Campbell. Because yeah, there's there's a whole conversation about that. Yeah, it afternoon, fell, it my fell brother. Afternoon, um, operator, so, operator error. That is so funny. That's the yeah. first thing Campbell says. What the? And that's the first what? thing Deshaun said too. Deshaun was oh, like, yeah. "Who the fuck is that guy?" Oh yeah. yeah. So, so. I mean, the Switch is really the epitome of what Nintendo was trying to go with with the Wii U. And it works. It really does. Because, you know, if I want to play a video game while watching a movie with with the misses, I can pull my Switch out the dock, boot it up in handheld mode, play Pokemon, play Zelda, play Mario, play, play anything poker. I want. Um and st- still be able to watch TV at the same time. Or if we have the neighbors over and we want to talk shit, drink beer, and play fucking Mario Kart, I throw it on the TV. We each grab a fucking controller and we play fucking Mario Kart. So 
I don't see Nintendo creating a whole new console. I see them improving upon the hardware that we've got so far. Because really the downfalls with the Switch as it is. In handheld mode, even with the OLED, if I'm playing, say, Legend of Zelda Breath of the Wild, the Zelda title that came out when the Switch launched, I get maybe three hours of gameplay before the console's dying, before the right. battery's about dead. Right. Um. So obviously, battery life's something they need to work on, but then at the same time, improved graphics. Figuring out a way to give us 4K graphics and better graphics, in because here's the thing. In a handheld? The dis- in a handheld. The display technology's out there because our cell phones can fucking do it nowadays. This is true. Our the processor in my cell phone, the memory in my cell phone, and the display on my cell phone can allow me to watch 4K content. So why can't you do it on a video game? So why can't Nintendo implement that into a Switch? Right. It's it's the, the text there. There's just improvements that Nintendo can do to the Switch hardware that people are going to go out and purchase it. You know, Nintendo got backlash when they announced the OLED. Like, oh, so what? Now we've got an OLED screen. But you know what people did? They still went and bought the motherfucker, even though they were complaining that it wasn't a pro fucking version of the console. Like, I don't give a shit if it's a pro version. Give me better graphics. Give me better battery life. Get it to the point where I can sit here and play a fucking game for five hours in handheld mode and not have to worry about, am I close enough to a power source to plug it in when it's about to die. Yeah. Right. Right. It's going to be There's gonna... no need for a whole new console to come out from Nintendo. Nintendo needs to give us the next gen or the current gen graphics that Xbox and the Series X and S have and the PS5 has in the Switch and the Switch will finally be where it needs to be. There's not there, I agree. There, to, to echo what you were just saying, like there's not a lot of need for a lot of things that are coming out right now. Among them, mm-hmm. like Shazam 2, Ant Man 3, you know, fucking all those bullshit fucking sequel movies, Scream 6, right? Like, so, so to answer you on that, Max, um, the Steam Deck, great concept. I love it. I want to get my hands on one so I can myself test out the hardware. Um, Because, yeah, then I will have a PC that I can carry around with me and play my Steam library on. Um, Am I very enthusiastic that it's locked down to just what I have in my Steam library? No. But at the same time, I understand that, you know, with the way the video game market is and everything being digital content nowadays, not a lot of people buy physical games anymore like they like we used to. Which is a mistake, Steam Deck, which I've always said is a mistake. Like, big mistake. The Steam Deck is the perfect way for Valve to capitalize and make money. And all they did was take the concept of the Nintendo Switch because the Steam Deck you can get a docking station for and connect it to a monitor and a mouse and keyboard and play your Steam games like you would if you were playing them on your PC. Right. So the Steam Deck is the PC version of a fucking Switch. That's all it is. And the concept's great. Were they original in their thought process with it? Hell no, because the Switch was there first. But for PC gamers that travel and shit. They made it work better. That's where the market is. That's where the market is. Yeah. 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 Steam knew there's a market for it, so they released something to fill that gap. And it's a hell of a lot cheaper than going out and buying a gaming laptop. I can get the 512 gigabyte version of the Steam Deck, which then I can drop my own M2 drive into and upgrade it to one, two terabytes of storage. And it's literally got the same storage as my full-blown fucking gaming PC for a quarter of the price of what a gaming laptop would cost me. Yeah. Yep. Sounds like it makes and, sense. And the last gaming news we have here, Ghost of Tsushima. There you go. 
movie may be black and white. Oh, fuck yeah. Kira Kur- Kurosawa style, dude. Fucking yep. A. That'd be dope yeah. if it fucking yeah. was. A lot, a, a lot of people. They've already sold me on this fucking movie, by the way. Yeah, I I'm, mean, I'm, I'm, I'm game. Gonna be if if it's black and white, I am game. Yeah, dude. It, that have, have you, Joe? Have, are you are you familiar with the game? Like, did you, did you play the game? I haven't played the game, but I've watched a lot of gameplay it, footage and a lot of people that have played it. It gets. It's one of the. It's it, you know. It's kind of like Grand Theft Auto and Feudal Japan, or like you know Feudal, like medieval, you know Feudal Japan or whatever. But it's like, <laughs> but it's. The way they do it is really good. The storyline is excellent, and the 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 visuals are stunning. And it's like so even even in the parts of the game that get a little repetitive, it it doesn't really lose its flavor. And it like it's it's very majestic at times. And like I'm I'm already sold on this fucking movie. This is like yeah, this I'm, this might actually translate to art, guys. If we're lucky, this might become art. Yeah. And, and huh? with the and huh? with the rise of the video game movies coming out with dude. you know Sonic they, Sonic and The Last of Us being Last such of us a hit. Last, they dude, they Last of Us was mm-hmm. a fucking very that was a very well done video game movie slash sh- uh, show. Yeah. One of the one of the first I've ever fucking seen. Yeah. Literally. Yeah. Like, and now mm-hmm. and now for this last news article, this is in no way, shape, or form to trigger any kind of fucking you know, whatever about the names of the fucking the bases. Okay. We know what the fuck was wrong with it. And that's fucking final. That's it. The so bases. the military yeah. bases oh, are getting renamed. Bases. Oh, yeah. Fucking yeah, yeah. Camp Liberty. Okay. A lot of a lot of these <laughs> a lot of these bases were found after the Civil War between the early and mid 20th century, an era in mm-hmm. which the bulk of Confederate monuments were erected as Southern states enacted laws yeah. disenfra- disenfranchising black Americans. Um, but the first the first designation would be Fort Rucker, Alabama, home of the Army's aviation training. And on April 20th, the base will be renamed after Chief Warrant Officer Michael Navoso Sr. A veteran of World War II and the Korean Vietnam Wars, uh, he was awarded the Medal of Honor in Vietnam after he flew his helicopter into heavy gunfire during 15 medical evacuations in Fuck one yeah. single battle, saving 29 soldiers. His, he- his helicopter was heavily damaged and he was also shot while flying. Fucking a, that's fucking pilot uh, right there. On April 27th, Fort Lee, Virginia will be redesignated to Fort Greg Adams, a name that references two trailblazing black officers, Lieutenant General Arthur Gregg, the first black soldier to rise to the three-star general in the logistics field, and Lieutenant Colonel Charity Adams, the first black officer in the Women's Army Auxiliary Corps, the component of the Army where women served when units were still segregated by gender. Mm -hmm. Gregg, 94, would be the only living person to have an Army post named after him. That's badass. That is fucking badass. On May 11th, good old Fort Benning, Georgia, which is the home of the service's infantry, tanker, and cavalry scout basic training, will be renamed Fort Moore after Lieutenant General Hal Hal Moore Moore. and his wife, Julia Moore. Hal Moore, a Korean and Vietnam War veteran, is best known for leading the 1st Battalion, 7th Cavalry Regiment in the legendary Battle of La Grange Valley in 1965. Immortalized in the book and movie, we were soldiers. We were soldiers. Yep. The mm-hmm. battle was one of the first major engagements for the U.S. in the war and was the first notable employment of modern cavalry and air assault tactics. That's correct. That is all correct. Yep. Okay. Hey, good congratulations to the Moore family, dude. Like a little bit of recognition right there, yep. dude. So uh, uh, I think this couldn't have been more overdue because we've actually talked about this too. Yeah. Rebranding Fort Hood. Yeah, Fort there's I, there's a couple places that I would also say like regardless of uh regardless of involvement with uh you know with civil war civil, things like there was a lot war, of yeah regardless of that there's a couple of posts that probably just need a good old fashioned like yeah we're gonna call you by yeah. a different name now because you're kind of fucking stinking the place up dude like yep Fort, so Fort, Fort Hood, Hood definitely needs a fucking facelift yep right. Fort Hood is set to be renamed Fort Cavosos on May 9th after Richard Cavosos the army's first Hispanic four-star general and veteran of the Korean and Vietnam Wars. He earned the Distinguished Service Cross separately in conflict for heroic actions in combat. Fort Bragg, North Carolina. Fucking Camp Liberty. It, it's actually going to be called Fort Liberty. Fort Liberty. For, oh, so they... Because yep. they were initially going to do Camp Still Liberty. Camp. Yep. So it's, not a fan. So it's, not a fan. It's going yeah. for... I, I don't, so not I, a fan, dude. Like... You know, it's the only post that will not be named after a famed member of the service, which, you know, brag and changing brag and 
to liberty. It just doesn't fit because it's fucking brag. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Um, you can, and, you can, and you, you can change brag without making it so like, like it, it's they just really shot themselves in the dick on that one. Like, yeah, there's a way, yeah. If we're gonna change brag from brag, like <laughs> it needs to be something with a little bit more fucking dick, probably because fucking. It's yeah. they, they literally call it the center of the universe when you're there. It's called the center of the universe. Like that's the nickname they give it, the center of the universe. Because <laughs> yep, in the so- army, that is where fucking like the the everybody at the top of the top of the top fucking comes in and out of. Okay, if that's if that's the part of the army you want to be in, it is the center yeah. of the fucking universe. So, like, so Brett, fucking so, Liberty, yeah. dude. Like so, come on, yeah. We're so better, Fort Liberty did say the name Fort Liberty was not chosen at random. Those who served in the naming commission for Fort Bragg struggled to agree on one name for more than 50 Medal of Honor recipients for the replacement of Fort Bragg, who would capture and encompass the scope and spirit of this installation. Each of them is just as deserving as the other, but what resonated amongst the commission and community members was the desire to name the installation not after a single person, but a value or characteristic that would have significance for everyone. I, I'm sorry. I disagree with that. Because I, I feel like if you honor you someone, too. you're doing, you're honoring that that duty by honoring that person's name. I would. But, uh, my vote, my vote would have been for uh, Fort uh, Benavides after uh, Roy Benavides, because he mm-hmm. he started in the 82nd and then eventually made it to the Special Forces, and then and then later became a Medal of Honor recipient from the yeah. for actions that occurred during the Vietnam War, and so he had he had touched like both both of the hot spots you know, at, at, at Bragg basically. And so like, mm-hmm. why not fucking Fort Benavides guys like that? Like that? I don't, I don't think people would have a problem switching from Bragg to Benavides. I don't think you know so I mean? either. I dude, bro. I don't like, think they so. really, they really yeah. fucked up with like Lib- Liberty doesn't sound like Bragg. There is no, there's no Liberty. There's no Liberty at the center of the universe, dude. When you want to play with the big boys, when you want to yeah. jump out of planes with the fucking homies, dude, like, there is no fucking liberty, dude. Like you're you're locked yep. down. You're locked down tight because that's fucking that's how the big boys play. Like, come on, man. Fucking Fort Liberty. Mm-hmm. Dude. Yes. And 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 you know, then we have Fort Gordon. The date is not set in stone, but garrison officials are aiming for October. Uh, this coincides with the birthday of Dwight D. Eisenhower, who will be the installation's new namesake. For Fort Gordon, uh, Fort AP Hill, Virginia, or Fort Polk, Louisiana, do not have dates yet for their renaming. Spokespersons have told uh, the media right now. Better Fort. figure it the fuck out, guys. Yeah, Better because the time, the, the time, the time is coming. And before- fucking- Gordon is changing to Eisenhower. Yeah, Fort Eisenhower. Fort Eisenhower. I can dig. I, I can dig Eisenhower. Just I, I, yeah. I, I like. I like Ike. I like. I Ike. like Ike. They should have yeah. just called it Fort Ike. They, dude, they probably like straight will. up. They probably, they probably will. yeah. They it's, probably. It's, it's gonna be the nickname. The nickname. Yeah, Fort Ike nickname. is gonna be what people are gonna call it. Nobody's gonna actually call it Eisenhower. Yeah. Yep. Guaranteed. And so, here, before we hit the final thought, which I'm taking today, we are going to do the wheel of names. We, we, we didn't For touch on week. one piece of news from this week. Oh what? Oh shit! What was that? The LTT stuff slash oh, yeah. YouTube oh, channels. Yeah. Do it. Do it. <laughs> So, so another development in the kind of the tech slash YouTube slash podcasting, streaming, all that jazz fucking thing. Um, earlier this week, we had an incident on YouTube where not one specific channel, well, a specific channel kind of headlined it because they made content about it after they recovered from this situation. Um, several channels were hacked on YouTube and started live streaming a like crypto live stream that showed like Elon Musk as the forefront talking about some kind of cryptocurrency. <laughs> um, one of these channels being Linus tech tips um, and several other channels alongside that and uh, several other, several of the channels falling under the Linus media group umbrella. There was a video that was released by Linus and his crew of he, from them kind of battling and trying to regain control of their channels. Several of the channels got taken down. Videos, all videos were wiped out. And at one point in this video clip we're going to see here, Linus is woken up at 2 o'clock in the morning by another YouTuber via fo- phone call 
saying your channel is being hacked. So this guy goes downstairs in his house and is sitting at a computer trying to battle this, this attack on his channels, but naked. As you can see here, they have it blurred out because it's two o'clock in the morning. He was dead asleep. He's not thinking put clothes on. His wife He's is just on thinking, the other side too. I need doing... to save my fucking life's work. <laughs> you can see his wife on the other side too. Like, you know, you can tell she's she's like so what frantic the, about it too. What was the end result? Has, um, it been, has it been resolved yet, or like what was? So the... it's been resolved. He was able to get his channels back, but in the process, all the videos that were on the channels that of his that got taken down by YouTube because this live stream went against guidelines. Um, he was able to get his channels back up and running. All of the videos he had on his channels were getting deleted. He got all those back up. Um, so, I mean, as of right now, like he, everything's completely back, back up like, and running. He looks like a prolific, prolific freaking content creator. So, like, I, I could see that being... If that's he's more, he's more, more, more than just a content creator. They're a whole company that does computer yeah. shit. So, like they, right? They, they, they have that, a reputation. So there's a, yeah, there's a reason. He, he is, so this this isn't like some celebrity fucking wigging out because freaking, no. you know, whatever. Like this is this this is this dude's like like you said, it's his life, his work. livelihood. Yeah, yeah. Um, like, it's his. Yeah. So he used to work for Linus, the owner of the company. He used to work for a Canadian computer parts store called ncix um while he was there he was like their manager of um of development and branding he started a youtube channel for that company called ncix tech tech tips um he had a he decided to break out and go on his own and bought the tech tips and ncix tech tips channel from the company he was working for and then rebranded it under linus tech tips since then, he formed his own media company where he's got buildings with entire sets and stages and stuff that they shoot different content on. Like, he's a complete media company that right. focuses purely on tech. Um, right. Several several channels, um, podcasts, live streams, all these different things, talking tech and stuff. So it's it's his life's work. Pretty much his entire being is this channel, is his media company. And almost all of his channels that are tied back to his main company, to his LLC, to the media group, were being attacked. Shit. Yeah. It's intense. <laughs> so, I mean, of course, if I was in his shoes, yeah, I'd have been downstairs in my fucking home office trying to battle this butt naked at two o'clock in the morning, too. Fucking I, I well, like, yeah, you just it's one of those things you can't you can't rest on your fucking laurels just because you make it to a certain uh, pinnacle in life. You know what I mean? You have to fucking mm -hmm. if you you know, what, what do they say? Like if, if you're if you're if you're champion, dude, if you're on top, if you're on top of the hill, dude, like the only thing people have to do is fucking come gunning for you. You know what I mean? Exactly. So like you got to You got to stay hungry. Gotta stay hungry. Absolutely. Uh, cra crazy, crazy uh, whirlwind of events for them. And now we're going to do the fucking wheel. All right, here we go. It's going to be between the hot seat, I Descent, Cards Against Humanity Live, which could be very dangerous. And it could be very, very dangerous. And Military Tales. Oh, boy. Super Aryan Hitler. Oh, my God. That fucking dude, that, that shit just kept coming up that it's night. It's going to come back. <laughs> Probably is. Okay. And here we go. Yeah, I think we probably had Hitler mentioned like 12 it's times. Three, that yeah, night. Like somewhere between three and 20. You know what oh, I mean? Oh, oh, what's it going to be? It's fucking it cards. It's it's fucking humanity. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, so yeah. just so you guys know, if you are watching the show next week and you want to play Cards Against Humanity, you will see the code that you'll be able to join in live. So next week. For our center segment, we will play a little bit of Cards Against Humanity, we're, which we're is getting, I'm telling you right now, we're gonna get taken down, dude. Like, well, like we we are not. They're gonna take. They're gonna fucking shut our stream down, dude. Like, just wait. Like, that's and you fucking, know what? We'll go right back fucking live when they do it. 
yep. just like when we got taken down over that yeah, one specific time. word. Yeah. The backup, um, the yeah. backup plan is if you shut us down on Facebook, we're gonna go to our YouTube, which is already set up for live. So it's That's right. That's right. So we've Fucking. got backups for our backups. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And if that can't, doesn't work. Can't, can't cancel what you can't cancel what's already been canceled and if bro. that doesn't like, work we'll go fucking got, we'll fu fucking go live on twitter on instagram on on d live on fucking what's the other one uh trovo but, you'll, uh, but, you, but you won't find us on any of those motherfuckers either we're, we're just there bro we're just fucking there yeah like, yeah <laughs> and so make sure make sure you guys join us guys we're here at that time at the end of the show thank you so much for joining us while we were talking about some origin stories but right now we're going to get a little deep we have resources up the ass for you, okay? There is no excuse. If you're feeling if you're feeling down today, if you're feeling lonely, if you just don't want to do it anymore, if you don't want to talk to us, you can call the National Suicide Hotline, 1-800-273-TALK. That's 1-800-273-8255 or 988. You could also hit the crisis text line. You could text HELLO to 741-741, or you could go on the website, www.crisistextline.org. The American Foundation for Suicide Prevention is www.afsp.org. I have to put all these into the to the oh, you're fine you're fine yeah I got, I got a couple for you here yeah suicide awareness voices of education save.org i iasp.info slash resources slash crisis centers the Trevor Project, 24-7 support at thetrevorproject.org or one 866 488 mentalhealthamerica.net. The National Alliance on Mental Health, which is NAMI.org. It is important that while these resources are available, they may not be the best fit for everyone. And if someone is in immediate danger, you should call 911 or seek help from a trusted individual or healthcare provider. You can also check out Rise Above the Disorder. It is a nonprofit that takes the hassle out of finding a therapist and covers the cost for those in need worldwide. There's going to be a link in our Discord available in our mental health resources section. Um, we're going to have all this stuff up for you. I'll have it more prepared as I'm just receiving all this information. Guys, you are not alone. You will never be alone. Okay? Jay goes through it. Joe goes through it. I go through it. Your mother goes through it. Your wife goes through it. Your husband goes through it. Hell, your fucking pets go through it, too. Don't let them be the one today. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to another episode. Join us next week for number 104. We're going to have another good time, and Squilini's going to have a little bit of his beard back. Yeah, we'll see. <laughs> have a good day, guys. Guys, this, this was a good one. This was special. I appreciate y'all. Always have a, a good pleasure. one. Always a pleasure. Fuck you, Facebook. <laughs>